just follow the screams on Bad Movies Rule, the worst movie podcast ever recorded. And today, believe it or not, we're one of these lunatics going back to the island. That's right, it's time for Lost World Jurassic Park 2. Let's go! Man, well, you're, this is your first trip to the island, Patrick, because you weren't with us when we did the first Jurassic Park. Correct. So, technically, you're more like Nick going for the first time. We're the, the idiots slash lunatics that are going back again. He's our backup plan. That's right. You're the backup plan. <laughs> it's a bad backup. You're going to get us off this <laughs> island alive. We're screwed. <laughs> Perfect. Well, welcome back. Nicole Freer is in the house. What's up, Nicole? Hey, just, just, should have made some jello and shook it around on a spoon for two Oh, bit. just for old, old time's sake, right? I feel like it wasn't that long ago we did Jurassic Park on Good Movies Rule. Every time we're together, everyone, it feels like minutes since the last. I know, it does. That was on our Patreon. So if you haven't had a chance to get on there and listen to that, we talk about good movies once a month on the there. Ryan Madela also on the boat back to the island. Howdy. Hello, sir. Why are we here? We got, that's Why a question. Did we come no, back? I have that question <laughs> through this whole thing. Yep. Why? And when I just no, I come back, they come back like five more times after this. There's like six movies. Okay. So if they think this is your last trip to the island, you're wrong. That's all I have to say. This is no longer an expedition. It's a rescue mission. <laughs> That's right. We've got to rescue no. our brains from the, Jurassic, the ever-decreasing um, quality of the Jurassic Park series yep. as we nosedive into oblivion. Get the tertiary characters and then whatever's past that. That's right. Quaternion. Quaternion. Yep, sure. Yep, I like that. Over at the kids' table, we've got the mayor making a guest appearance. I'm here. I'm driving the boat. I will be parking it off. Perfect. Sure. Good luck trying to get a hold and of me. And then never answering the phone ever. Because <laughs> we all know that boat is not there anymore. I, t- I actually took it back to El Salvador or <laughs> yeah. wherever the hell it came from. Well, I so. figured, man. <laughs> all right. Well, look, welcome in, everybody. For those of you that have never watched the show before or listened to the show, we are going to go through this movie scene by scene. First, we're going to give you all the particulars who wrote it, directed it, starred in it, all that, the scores, how it qualifies. Because we talk about movies that have bad ratings. doesn't mean we think it's bad. We'll decide that at the end here. We're going to give it awards. Who is the best? Who was the worst, then ultimately what our final determination is. So strap in. If you guys have never joined us before, it's going to be a fun ride through the Lost World, colon, Jurassic Park, because the studio thought people weren't going to know what this was. Do you think they'll get it? <laughs> will they? Yeah, but will they know it's Jurassic Park yeah, 2? Yeah, the, the dinosaur logo on it yeah, kind of gave it away, I The thought, identical but... logo, a returning cast member, directed by Steven Spielberg. How will they know? No one's going to show up. Mo- movie about dinosaurs. Right. I mean, whatever. That's fine. They could have just done Jurassic Park colon Lost World. Or the Lost World. Yeah, which made, would have made more sense. Yes. If you're going to have it in there, yep. have it first. Or they could have just been like JP Dose. Right, because if you get through the Lost World, I might, I might check out before I get to the rest of the title. Yep. I wonder if it was supposed to be like yeah. a subheading, though, like where like Jurassic Park was going to be its own franchise of yeah. multiple... Like they were gonna split it out, maybe. Maybe. So the I believe the novel was just called The Lost World. It right. was. Uh, that so that's sense. they kept the novel name and then just added. And then this. the studio was like, "But people aren't gonna know." Right. And they're like, "Well, you're dumb. They will definitely know." But they put it in there anyway. I and think they, there's other stu- other ones have done that. Yeah. Yeah. And the intro scene with the little girl when when we once we get to that that yeah. was in the book for the for, for the original. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The only one I can, I'm sure there's more. The one I thought of immediately was how uh, First Blood was the Rambo movie, right? And then when they came back with the second one, it just goes Rambo 2, colon, first, or no, Rambo, colon, First Blood Part 2, right? Everyone's like, what? Yeah. Well, then the third one was Jurassic Park 3, right? It, yeah. It wasn't was. a, yeah. yeah. So well, they were actually, like, yeah, that was, was Jurassic let's just Park go back to it. Claw marks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> claw marks. Real. Got, that's right. That's technically right. It wasn't even three, it was Jurassic Park Claw Marks. Yeah. Well, look, let's, uh, we all know who directed this movie as we get into the vitals here. Directed by Steven Spielberg, the last Jurassic Park movie that Steven Spielberg would direct, but he would go on to produce. He was actually only supposed to produce this one, and then he went, ah, all right, I'll do it. He had a pretty good career after anyway, so yeah. I don't feel bad for him. No, 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 okay. no, not at all. Great. He did? He had taken a big break before this. This was right after Schindler's List. He did He did Dress Park and Schindler's List, 93, 94. What a, what a duo, man. Right? right? Then took a, They're really like much a, the same movie when you think about it. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Just kidding. 
I had about four <laughs> jokes that just went through my head, and I went, nope, nope, yep. and nope. Can't say nope. that one. <laughs> nope, 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 moving right along. Yep. Uh, Next. <laughs> And uh, he took a three, what, three years off and then came back with Lost World. So this was his return after his sabbatical from uh, from what was probably an emotional experience making Schindler's List, I would guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, movie was written by David Kep, also same writer as the, I mean, based off Michael Crichton's novel, but screenplay, same guy from the first one, David Kep. Movie star Jeff Goldblum as the only returning member. I mean, there's cameos, but as far as main cast, he's the only main guy. Like mm-hmm. Alan Grant didn't got like Laura Dern's not back. Sam Neill's not back. Uh, Julianne Moore comes in, uh, Vince Vaughn steps in, and Pete Postlethwaite also steps in, along with many others we'll talk about. The budget for this film was $73 million. It's a lot. Yep. Dinosaurs eat a lot. It's a lot of Taco Bell. Right. But, but you know what? The craft services was out of control. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> They're just dumping it via helicopter right. like when they did the cow in the first one. Right? Just <laughs> yeah, goats. just <laughs> drop it down. Rain and goats. Yeah. Hallelujah. How much of the guy producers on the phone? How much of these freaking goats? We gotta get, where are we getting these from? It's ridiculous. It's out of control. Uh, here's why it's okay that it was a $73 million budget. They pull in six hundred and eighteen million dollars wow. from this movie. That's it. Off of the seventy-three <laughs> mil. See today, they don't. I feel like the seventy-three million dollar movie is gone. You're either making a two hundred, two hundred fifty yeah. million double, dollar minimum. movie, yeah, or or they're like Netflix releases. Pure indie yeah, vibe, yeah, right, right. right? Exactly. And so, six hundred million off a two hundred fifty million dollar budget is not that great. But this is awesome. A, right? Yeah, you know. They, but in, I mean, even today's dollars, that's like a billion dollars, right. probably. That's what I'm saying. So great job there. Actually, beat out Batman, who had replaced, who had come, who had stepped in in the interim and taken over the box office record from the original Jurassic Park. And Batman had it before the first Jurassic Park. So for like halfway through the '90s, it just kept trading the the crown between Batman movies and Jurassic Park movies for a while until Titanic came the next year and was like, uh, this is ours now until Avatar. So <laughs> got you. <laughs> until James Cameron decides to make another movie, yeah. you know, and then James Cameron just holds on to it now. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, until Endgame, uh, eventually Avengers came back, yeah. but yeah. Uh, this movie, this is interesting guys, because we've just talked about, this is a 6.5 on IMDb, which ties for 25th. So there's uh, with a bunch of other movies, there's 24 movies we've done that have rated higher than that on IMDb. But Phantom Menace was a 6.5, which we just did, Star Wars. Oh. And two weeks ago, Batman versus Superman was also a 6.5. So we're like on this kick of doing 6.5 rated films. Batman. Batman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Batman and Sup- Superman, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, here's how it qualifies, because that's obviously too high to qualify on its own. It qualifies because it's rotten. Guys, this movie is rotten on the critics' and audience scores, but borderline. It's 53% from critics, 51% from the audience, whereas 60 is fresh for both. So, Wow, I didn't realize people didn't like this that much. Yeah, yeah well, the, the, the people, the audience score surprises me. Yeah. Critics, we roast the critics all the time because yeah. they're morons, but the audience score on this one, that being that low surprises me. 51, I mean, it's like kind of a dead split, whether people like this or not. So yeah. I'm interested to see at the end here with five of us and obviously the patrons that are playing along where we end up you know, with the split here in the room. But I think we're going to run into a little bit of the Jaws effect with this one, right? Where it was like Jaws 2's biggest problem was that it came after Jaws, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like one of the greatest movies of all time. And the things that were just (laughs) like captivating and amazing and new and novel, we'd already seen some of that. Right. And so, you know, you do the sequel thing where you ramp it up more T-Rexes, more Raptors, more stuff. Well, and I saw yeah. something that said that the, the writer actually had gotten a letter oh. from somebody that said you needed more dinosaurs. And he kept that letter like taped next to his computer as he was writing this script and oh. was like specifically saying like, I have to remember to put more dinosaurs in this one. Yeah, that's awesome. I think every movie could benefit from more dinosaurs. Generally. Sure. Let's let's just add. Let's our new segment instead of Arnold. How yeah. can we put dinosaurs in these <laughs> movies and make them Titanic? For, for <laughs> which, which, <laughs> which dinosaur would make this movie better? Uh, uh, Kathy Bates is riding a brontosaurus <laughs> out in the water, like to get away. She's got survivors on the back yes. of the thing. Yes. Yeah, that's immediately what I thought of. She would be the one to tame and ride a dinosaur mm-hmm. in that movie for sure. Uh, all right, awesome. So that's where we that's where we fall in. It's another one we just kind of did. Uh, Dragon Heart, where also was kind of a right on the line with people, yeah. and so we got another one. And, that's and kind of split Pete Postlethwaite here. and Pete Postlethwaite two in a row, two weeks in a row. Fun to say. Nothing but Pete Postlethwaite movies from here on out. Usual suspects next week <laughs> on uh, BMR. Ooh. All right, 
So in the meantime, guys, before we dive in here, I do want to let people at home know how to get in touch with the show because we like hearing from you guys. One of our tent poles of this show is has always been listener interactions. We like to have you guys participate. If you're part of the Patreon in our awards, we like to have you guys participate in our mailbag segments or voicemails. If you want to reach out, you can do that at this show is trash at gmail.com. That's our email. Or you can call the show 262-757-8567. Leave us a voicemail. I know it's been a few weeks. Um, probably by the time this comes out, we'll have just had one came out. But there was a gap where we didn't have any mailbags. We had some extra bonus stuff for the 150th that we were trying to put out and together. But we're going to get back to doing more mailbags more often. So please reach out and uh, we'll get you guys on the show. And we want to hear your takes. Send us stories about times you watch these movies. Tell us your takes on these movies. Tell you know, Ask us you know, our opinions about things we don't normally get to talk about on the show. I mean, there's all kinds of things we can do on that mailbag. And then again, if you want to back the show and be part of the foundation here, you can do that at patreon.com slash badmoviesrule. That's all down in the show notes, and there's all kinds of extra shows. Like we just talked about a minute ago, Good Movies Rule, you want to hear us talk about the first Jurassic Park? Head on there. I think for as low as $3 a month, you can get some of these bonus shows, and it's a good time. Don't you think it's a good time, Ryan? I enjoy it. As the person who probably puts out more Patreon content than anybody else, because you're doing On the House, you're doing The Horror Reel, you're on Good Movies Rule sometimes. Yeah, you should probably sign up for it. It's yeah. Fun. Because Ryan is literally working his fingers to the bone here, people. I don't even have fingernails anymore. Look, they're gone. They're gone. <laughs> Perfect. All right, guys. Well, let's go. It's time to pay the bills. You guys ready to dive into the plot of The Lost World? Let's do it. Here's the plot. Are you ready? I'm ready. Dinosaurs are alive and real. And, and every one of these movies, there's some idiot that's like, this is a good idea. We should, you know, round these things up open a zoo, open a park, whatever. It's the same dang plot in every single one of these movies. Every single one. So there's no different in this one. The Lost World, Jurassic Park, a.k.a. colon, of course this idiot would have a second island. That should be the whole title of the movie. Yes. Right? That, was should, the that should have been a subtitle. That was the working yeah. title. Jurassic Park 2, they had another island. These idiots. Of course they did. John, That's too long. John Hammond John, John. is a moron. Electric Boogaloo was taken <laughs> as well. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, all right, we start off, before we get into all that nonsense, which, uh, which you know, my favorite thing about talking about Jurassic Park movies is making fun of the morons that think this is a fantastic idea, so <laughs> we'll get to plenty of that. But first, we've got a rich family and their yacht parked off the coast of, it's not Island Nubar, that was the other island, right? Sorna. Sorna. Uh, yeah, that's Sorna. 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 Okay. But it just could, for all they know, it's a deserted island. They're somewhere in Costa Rica, Right. And they've got their yacht and their seven manservants like setting up yeah. lunch or brunch or whatever it is on the beach. And champagne. Well, the, yeah, the champagne. The <laughs> butler number one walks past with champagne out, and yeah. butler number two walks up to a glass that's sitting out and pours it. So the wife and the husband have separate butlers for their champagne. Yes. Butler. And there's a the champagne wife butler. Walks up to the table, could have poured her own champagne. But she asked the butler to pour no, her she champagne. she can't be bothered to do no, that. That's why they have my own champagne. Well, then they can't oh. justify the payroll to have the pouring guy. That's his only job. Right. You got to have him come and pour both the have, champagne. They both have to pour. Or I mean, what are we paying him for? I mean, right. think about this is job creation, man. So right. I'm saying, like, I don't these, care. Yeah. These Go guys ahead. are. They're employing people. Right. That's why I want to waste their money on, I'll, you know. Is I know a couple guys that could get a job being a champagne pourer. Uh, right. Hey, I will go pour champagne <laughs> if I get to ride on a yacht. To some island, not this island. Tropical. <laughs> well, as we later find out, yes. But is that innocent a, enough? Is that a write-off? I, I mean, like I think butlers? it is. It's got to, dude. When they're all later running down the thing, and there's like seven guys in little like little dickies, uh, you know, yeah. sailor suits or whatever. And then I'm like, how many people? This is. There's got to be people still on the boat. Oh sure, right? yeah. Uh -huh. The captain's still on the boat. The first mate, you got the <laughs> boat crew. Yeah, and they probably got people that are hired just to distribute the weight appropriately. <laughs> like, hold on, hold on. We're gonna go on this side of the boats. We need oh. manservants right. two, three, and nine yeah. to go over to that oh. side. Hold Starboard. on, the bow is riding kind of yeah. high. You six, seven, and eight, get up front there, they, sit down. They uh, they go. Okay, look. Uh, what you know with the job interview. We're gonna hire you, but you're gonna be ballast. That's that's your whole job is to balance the boat. How much Can does you, that pay? A lot. Okay. okay. More, more than you currently make at McDonald's. We need you to put on as much weight as our daughter weighs right now and then continue <laughs> to increase that weight so that you can be the counterbalance exactly yes. for her as she's bouncing around. Exactly. They're having a snack on a deserted island. Okay. And as uh, one does. This little girl. This little girl. 
Gets her, gets her a little. I thought it was a taco. I thought it was a taco at first. The way she was holding it, but it was a sandwich. Yeah. It's roast beef. It's roast she beef. tells the dinosaurs what it is. <laughs> it's not. It's not our beef. She, does. she oh, got is it. the biggest brat. The mom's like, we're gonna have whatever they're having beef tips or whatever. And, yeah. And the girl's like, I don't like those. <laughs> and she just runs off with her sandwich. And she Ugh. she she finds she finds a bird. Question mark. It's <laughs> a cute little bird. She goes, what are you, a bird? First of all, that's, not going to answer you. That's why they have so many servants. Actually, if, if anything is going to answer you, though, it daughter. is a bird. Well, that's yeah. the thing. A None tropical those, bird in particular. You know, None of have, those servants were teachers, obviously. No, obviously not. Their daughter needs that much protection because she's like, it's a bird. And like, no, honey, that's a dump truck. <laughs> Apparently, the one that they forgot to hire of all these things was one man servant just to keep an eye on her. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, no, no baby. Babysitters. Yeah, they have somebody to pour the champagne, but they don't have a babysitter no. guy that's whole job is to follow her around so she doesn't get eaten by it, dinosaurs. Into the right. jungle, even if there were no dinosaurs. Right, right. Let her go there could into be the jungle. A it's razorback fine. or sure. something or yep. a snake. Or a big hole to or, fall into. Or a giant <laughs> kid-sized hole. Sure. In the beach. Sure. Did you guys see the waves too when she's running past? It looks oh. like the Pacific Ocean, and there's just huge waves crashing into the beach. And you're like, oh. "Yeah, just let her run down the just, beach. Oh, what could, what could I mean, it wrong? is an ocean. Well, I, I'm saying though, right. Pacific Pacific Ocean there's nobody here versus right. the Atlantic because the Atlantic's yeah. a lot calmer. But then there's suddenly. Sorry, it depends. <laughs> Whatever, Sorry. man. You don't even watch Star Wars. No, I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, by the way, thanks for showing up for this episode. Seriously. No problem. <laughs> Not a problem. I'm I showed up for the original I'm one. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> He's the OG. All right. So eventually, or not eventually, rather quickly, there are suddenly three or four more little birdies. And they're not. They're little dinosaurs. They're lizards. They're little, they're little okay. Lizards. They look like lizards. And at first, I'm like, "Give him your sandwich and get out of there!" But and she, but then she actually does. She like chucks yeah. her sandwich. I don't down. think there's enough. For well, you. She starts feeding yeah. them like little help. Sh- shreds of roast beef, and right. I'm just thinking to myself, it's not a good diet. They tell you don't feed the animals for a reason. I, right, but right? How, yes, they tell you that for, so that this doesn't happen. She does end up getting attacked by these little dinosaurs, and I'm sitting here going. How weak is this girl? I mean, there's like seven of them. I feel like I could fight 48. And they're not even as big dinosaurs. as a chicken. I mean, they're small. No. How many Have chickens? Have you ever seen a rooster go crazy, How though? How many chickens could you fight? That's fair. Have you seen a rooster go nuts? Yeah. There's a threshold. I'm right? telling yeah, you, man. There's a threshold. Roosters a have that big uh, <laughs> talons. There's a there. reason that Listen. Hitchcock did a, a movie called Birds and not, <laughs> and not Lizards. Because birds are... Just nightmare animals. That's they are true. they are some of the creepiest animals in the world. Patrick, I could chuck a chicken <laughs> one pretty far. Okay. What this roosters? isn't Fortnite James. I'm talking <laughs> roosters. <laughs> Here's what I'm saying. Above all of our heads, this just is just an angry cock, and then 40 <laughs> other ones come out of the woods at you. Yeah. I think I downloaded the and wrong I'm going, Jurassic and I'm Park. Down. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling up my <laughs> sleeves, and we're getting after it. I, here's here's what I'm saying. I don't know what the number is. This is the way my brain works. Right now, above our heads floats an invisible number that we don't know. But there is a number of chickens that you Correct. could fight and yes. not die, yep. and one more would kill you. Whatever that is. For you, it might be a different number than for you. I, the way my brain is, I'm just curious what everybody's number is, and I don't know. We would ever know. We never know until right. we're put in that situation. But I think mine's 47, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm saying 96, but this family, can they got butlers specifically for the champagne and the glass. You think this girl's ever had to lift her hand to fight a chicken? No, I don't think she no. has. Yeah, and does the chicken have the element of surprise is also another question. If I was yeah. ready and I had like my box no, of No, I think you on. got in and you knew you were going to fight chickens. Okay. If you're just sitting there in your in your like, you know, Sunday best with a roast beef sandwich, right. that's a difference. And no it. champagne. Right. No champagne. Gosh. <laughs> you could at least break off the glass and That's why the, the dinosaurs were so mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, they saw, though, the butlers aren't around. There's one butler for each of us, <laughs> but on. they ain't here right now. They're like, well, you want me to eat this roast beef sandwich with no champagne? <laughs> okay, come on. All right, so then obviously the parents run over when they hear her screaming, and she doesn't. Thank God they updated us a few minutes later to be like, she's fine. She didn't yeah, die. She just, I thought she was totally dead. She's just missing an eye and part of her liver, but she's fine. Right. Dude, it would have been awesome if the <laughs> butlers came over and carried the kid, the, the parents over, like <laughs> Garcon, something is wrong with Tabitha or whatever her name is, and they just come running over and they carry her, and they're like, oh my goodness, they got him on the chairs. Yes, with the, with the yeah, the, the dad just similar to the way like Martin Short was being. Dragged around in Arrested <laughs> Development when he was playing the the yeah. old and the yeah. Uncle Jack, following yeah. behind with the champagne, yeah. throwing her glass on the way over. Yeah, the dad just slightly sits up with his newspaper. Kathy, Kathy, <laughs> dude, 
they run over. They scream. There was a, a nice little transition here. They, it cuts from the screaming mother to a yawning Ian Malcolm, played by Jeff Goldblum, in a subway somewhere. I thought that was a that was a funny, mm-hmm. which was similar yeah. to the first one, right? Yeah, we see somebody shoot her, doesn't. Yeah, for some reason nobody can shoot it. Guy dies. Then they right. fade into. What right. was it, Doctor Grant? That point was Doctor Grant. Yeah. yeah. So but I mean, same kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like it was made by the same people. Yeah. It's almost like <laughs> this movie is very trope heavy, and they yeah. borrowed a lot of those tropes from the first Jurassic from Park. themselves. But it's not plagiarism if it's yours. I if suppose. That's right. I suppose <laughs> we can rip myself off. It's I actually, there Shaker is self plagiarism. There is. There is. is. There? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah it is. That's yeah. dumb. I should. If I wrote it. I should be able to use it. Just be like, it's an homage to myself. You still have to. You still have to cite it. Uh, Ian goes into the subway where this is the first time we realize he's got some notoriety because a dude spots him and comes over and sits by him. He's like, you're the guy. Yeah. You're I the guy. You on TV. Did you recognize who that was? Anybody recognize who that was? Is that the dude from Breakfast Club? No, that's, that's Eli, like. it was Eli Roth who okay. would go on to be a director and he was in uh, Inglorious Bastards. He was the bear Jew in Inglorious Bastards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yep, yep, yep. You know, nice. so then he's directed Hostel and a bunch of other movies and that was Eli, very young Eli Roth. I believed you. <laughs> You know, with the, and I'm like, bro, that dude's scarier than any dinosaur that you've ever been. He seemed more uncomfortable in that seat than That's he was. It. That was the was whole movie, but they just added more. <laughs> Which also just is kind of the also the foreshadowing that people yeah. don't believe him, that they've been written off as kooks, and right. you know, the fact of the matter is that's what allows this second mission to go forward because people don't believe yeah. it. Meanwhile, there are how many people were eaten by dinosaurs? Right. Well, that's what I'm saying, and and, and, and it, their families aren't speaking out too. It's obviously Five. cost. <laughs> Yeah. Ian Malcolm, his credibility, mm-hmm. right? He's become right. kind of a pariah. So, it, which we see here, because we we find out where he's traveling to is John Hammond, who would, you know uh, Richard Attenborough, the proprietor of the first Jurassic Park, has summoned him to his home. And th- his words: "I've been summoned." Um, if I get here's my before I even get to this, I'm not answering John Hammond's emails. Okay, if I'm Ian <laughs> Malcolm, so like if, if I was summoned to his house, my oh. my response would be, uh, per my f- uh, previous experience, piss off right. uh, Ian Malcolm like that. So I don't even know why he's showing yeah, he's, up. It's a it's a no for me, dog. At John, <laughs> yeah, at John Hammond's house, but he does. He has to, or there wouldn't be a movie. But one, right when he gets in there, we f- we meet Peter Ludlow, played by Arliss Howard, who is John Hammond's nephew, who seems to be the lawyer that is now in charge of Ingen. The company that was running Jurassic Park. What did you think about the their interaction as Ian's kind of explaining for us what happened? I love this part. Signing the guy in front of Peter or Peter Ludlow. Peter, yeah. Peter Ludlow, yeah. The guy keeps handing him like, "Oh, you got to sign here. Oh, signature here." And he's yeah. kind of talking over him as he's going. Yeah, and I, and Ian stops in his tracks when he sees him because this is the guy that that obviously buried everything on behalf of, you know, protect the corporate interests of, you know, uh, InGen, right? Because they were, I'm assuming, facing every lawsuit, you know, known to man. And so he ruined Ian's credibility. He buried, you know, all these deaths and everything that happened and and cost him his career. And I thought it was an intense scene. I thought it was really good. To be fair, yeah. Peter's got a point, though. He's like, you signed a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> you weren't supposed to talk about any and of this. And then you disclosed. And then you disclosed. That's the opposite of what you're supposed to right. do with the non-disclosure closure agreement. Get out of here with that lawyer talk. He's like, but you know, with everything that's about to happen, it will soon be forgotten. And I love it. He grabs him and he goes, not by me. Yeah. Right? Before he goes past. He had about 750 one-liners like that throughout yeah. this whole movie. All the oh, great, yeah. all the best dialogue. Well, not all the best, but 90% of the best yep. dialogue was Jeff Goldblum yep. in Absolutely. this movie, for sure. And so he goes upstairs to see John uh, before that, though, the kids come, make a little cameo. The kids from Ariana Richards, and I can't remember the boy's name, come down the stairs and have a 30-second scene. Oh, hey, kids. Oh, it's great to see you. Remember that this is part of Jurassic Park? <laughs> you think <laughs> right. they'll remember? Right, exactly. So apparently, though, they were supposed to have a big role. Oh, right. really? And then they changed it. Yeah. Yeah. They were going to go to the island. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been better. Probably. Yeah. No. Here's the thing. <laughs> Where... Where are their parents? Yeah, where were their parents in the last one? This one is clearly their, their uncle. <laughs> this is their uncle, or not even it's, it's the dude that's uh, going. It's like their cousin. Like well, their, their parents' cousin. No, because no, Richard Hammond was their or grandpa. Richard Hammond. Hammond is their John grand, Hammond's their yeah. grandpa. Yeah, and if it's his nephew, I mean, like the second, whatever. Somebody it's some yeah. stupid. Family. But who the hell? If the kids would have gone back. CPS needs to be involved immediately and be like, why are you bringing your kids back to CPS, this place? They, they already should have had placement. They already shouldn't be Why would house. anybody allow their kid to go back and it, see Grandpa was, murder ever again? Well, CPS doesn't 
come for the rich families, so they don't. That's true. The parents don't know what happened though, because the kids signed a non disclosure. That's, that's true. Right. That's yes. true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Timmy came back with <laughs> electrical burns <laughs> from industrial strength. And then, I don't know, man. Like Timmy still, a, Timmy still drools yeah. um, when he tries. And he's got a slight twitch. He was playing with a bop it, and apparently it, it malfunctioned in his hands. He couldn't even make it down the stairs to see Ian. <laughs> oh my gosh, that just brings back some memories. I'm like, come on, <laughs> come on. It. All right. I was also thinking that uh, I don't know the amount of time that was supposed to go between the first and second yeah. uh, issues, installments of whatever. I think four years. Four years. Four years. They said in movie four but years. I didn't know if the aging of the kids didn't match that, and if they just wanted right. to just brush them. They just yeah. that's maybe that's why they were like, "Hey, quick, it's them." Yeah. But get out of here before we get a good long look at them. Because sometimes right. kids in movies are precocious and great, but then when they're preteen, teen, maybe they're just not as For what, what sure. they want, right? Not that they didn't do a great job, No, but perhaps it was the age of the children. For sure. Uh, he gets in to talk to John. This is where John Hammond tells him about Site B, that there's this other island where we had we had sent them and raised them to a certain point and then brought them over to the other island, but now it's flourishing on its own, and even though they're supposed to die after seven days without lysine, somehow life has found a way. And he life finds a way. Life finds the lysine. Quotes John him back. Hammond. Yeah. Is a sociopath? Yeah, he's an idiot. <laughs> he is the dumbest person. You'd think after what happened in the last, like, I get his optimism, his blind optimism in the first one, but why yeah. on earth is he still like that? But even said you were right. He said, yeah, it. <laughs> <laughs> so right. So he tells him, look, but you know, InGen's going to go in and, and basically rape this place, and we need well, to he conserve it. Tell him, oh, they, no, they but, haven't. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't know when it's happening. Right, but like at some point it's going to happen, but we need to get public sentiment on our side and conserve it. And so he's now he's gone from full capitalist to full conser conservationist. I think is what mm -hmm. Ian says to him, right? And uh, we're going to send in an expedition to document them. And Ian goes with people? <laughs> Question mark. Let, let me get this straight. No offenses this time. <laughs> And we send the people in with them. With them. He goes, and who, uh, who are these four lunatics? <laughs> well. Every, it, Jeff Goldblum is just giving me life through this whole movie. Yeah. Uh, every single one of his, like, and, and he goes, uh, um, John, uh, no, is my answer. And not only, no, I'm going to find out who you asked, and I'm going to change their minds make sure they don't go. Uh, <laughs> like he's, and, and doesn't Jeff Goldblum tell him, like, that's still a bad idea or something? I forget yeah. the line exactly, but he goes, no matter how much you spin it or whatever, it's still a bad idea. Right. He goes, who, and I love after he says, who are those four lunatics? He starts going through who it is, and he goes, and I was hoping you would be. Yep, <laughs> that idiot. Like, and every time you say John Hammond, I think yeah. of the SNL sketch, John Hamm's yes. John Hamm. Yeah, anyway, look it up. That. It's really fun. It's good stuff. Yep. Um, he, John Hammond says, this is our last chance at redemption, uh -huh. right? And I'm Wrong. Like, Bro. No, that's already passed, it's man. Gone. It's gone. Way behind. <laughs> way, way, way behind. But this is where he finds out, and he goes, who's the paleontologist? And he kind of gives him a look, and he's like, who is it? Who is it, John? It's, uh, it's, it's, a, girl, it's a girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> and Sarah. Oh, by the way, she's already there. And she's already there, right? Isn't she? No, no, no she is there. I'm oh. just like, already, I've, like, I'm lost <laughs> yeah. in the movie. Like, like, what? Who? So he would date someone and tell uh, no, right? That's not a person he would date. No, not at all. Not in a million years. No. And it seems pretty obvious why she's dating him. That's the other thing that no one ever talks about in this movie. She sought him out because of what had happened, because of the stories, yep. just because she wanted to get closer to him to get to Dino Island. So, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. It's just. And you don't know your girlfriend left the country, right? I know they kind of touch on this a little, but I'm like, maybe your relationship it, isn't that it's, good. It sounds like a long distance relationship to me. Like she was maybe. in LA and he's in New York or somewhere wherever John Hammond lives, right? Yeah. Well, and paleontologists are going to be out on digs all over the yeah. world at potential times. So, I mean, you're not necessarily That's true. aware. She could have been at a dig site and had, you know, he sent his helicopter True. and they ruined the dig site because nobody was there to cover Which it with a tarp. Like the <laughs> it's a shame. All right, who's the jerk? I mean, so he should have been... <laughs> there's so much chemistry between them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, right? Just yeah. so believable. Massive amounts. I don't mean that. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't take all the chemistry. Not a scintilla of chemistry None. between them. Not one iota. None of that is Jeff Goldblum. Whereas so. we saw in the first one, when yeah. he was actually started dating Laura Dern, right. Tons of chemistry right. between yep. the two of them in that first movie. They should have got her back. They should have got her they back. They probably tried. Right? I'm assuming they did. She was like, story. no. Yeah. She's like, that's a bad idea. But anyway. Um, so he sent his girlfriend. This is when he gives the line, like you said before, it's no longer an expedition. It's a rescue mission, and it's leaving now. 
The thing I love about this scene is John Hammond is giving us that quintessential Jurassic Park energy of some moron going, what are you worried about? It's going to be fine. Like all the meat eaters are in the middle of the island. All the soft ones are on the outside. We skirt around the outside. It's fine. It makes an Oreo. <laughs> yeah, because when know, the meat eaters first. are like, hungry, they don't go to the outside <laughs> no. at all. That's is how it, it works. Is it a Jurassic Park movie without this specific element? No. I don't think it I mean, is. Well, he three. seems to be in a deathbed. Yeah, yeah, at this point. He so I mean, like, old. and he is so underhanded and devious that he knows the only way he's getting Goldblum to go is right. on a rescue mission. Once he left, he gave that look like I knew this is what would get him. Yeah. to be there, right? Yeah, I think part of that though is that he's thinking about his legacy a lot. Yeah. So I've got to rescue it while I can. That's true. In that age, that's all you're thinking about, yeah. probably right before you go. Who cares how many people die? That's right. As long as my legacy is intact. Uh, all right, so this is where we see a base of operations, which is like where the team that's going is getting ready. They're building the high hide thing, which is this you know box that gets you up really high out of. He's like, oh, uh, conveniently at biting height or whatever. He yeah. says it twice. <laughs> yeah. He's like, it's a high hide. You know, high hide. Yeah, I, yeah. it's yeah. like yeah. somebody yeah. ran out of words <laughs> when they were trying to name <laughs> this thing. Like, well, I don't, uh, it's high, and you're gonna hide. Like that's it's the, that's the name. I'll it's, come back it's to American, it later. I'm sure <laughs> it's American verbiage. We'll workshop yeah. it, yeah. and then they just Ball. never did. Nope. <laughs> this is a fall fall big. This is a fall big. <laughs> um, and they, sorry, go ahead, the go high on. hide, we see this later, but they don't explain it here, but they literally have the high hide attached to a small Jeep. Yeah. yeah the the dinosaurs Jeep. have lifted small Jeeps before. We know it's, this. It's one of their favorite things it's, to do, actually. It's like, is that a Jeep right there? Wee! <laughs> Oh, I just, I used one of those in the last movie. Oh, threw it seriously? off a cliff. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I love these they things. They did not learn a single lesson from the first movie no, at all. They, they figured that the having the high hide yeah. attached to the winch on the Jeep yeah. above the tree line is going to keep the dinosaurs. Yeah, had that worked out for Newman. Newman. the Jeep. <laughs> all Newman got eaten up. The winch didn't work for him. Newman. Oh. All the vehicles are colored in this dark camo. No wonder you're extinct. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Do you... <laughs> Do you really think the dinosaurs can't tell it's a vehicle? No, like, oh, it's camouflage. Whoa, wait, wait. This thing here. I it's swear a, there was just a car here. It's a bush. I don't think the dinosaurs were able to tell it was a car. Just, but it's I don't know place. the sharks in Deep Blue Sea know what a gun is. So what I'm you saying. Know, what they know it's about? not supposed to be here, though. They're not going to know it's... They're not supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, fair. it's fair. Did anyone try talking to them about that's, that? Yeah, right? Come you on. know, you guys, actually, you're, you're not... Not supposed to be here. How come nobody extinct. sent the psychologist to the <laughs> island? Right, or, or, social, or a social worker. Yeah. Go back to where you came from, they would probably try to say, and it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like you All feel right. out of touch with this world. How can it help you feel like you belong? What's your sense of purpose? I don't know. I just feel like I want to eat everything I see, and, and then I see everything I want to eat it, and I just... My mother didn't love me when I was an egg. <laughs> let's 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 uh, let's expand on that. <laughs> yeah, because your mother was a needle. <laughs> and, 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 you know, like there was, and, and 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 you know, John Hammond. I like to be here for all of That's them. That's right. Uh, if I could just get uh, in touch with the little weird. dinosaur inside. Is Speedy Wong here? Wait a minute. I, I thought they were him. being born on a different island and brought over. Yeah, except the island in the first movie, they were. He was like, I want to be at all of them, and it was happening on the main island. Yeah. I think that was a like part of the showcase thing. Is like that's just a. Because they're in a theater. That's the Disney World. Basically, part. yeah. So yeah, but it goes I think on all the time. A couple. Yeah. Well, there's no way John Hammond is at every hatching. That was a BS in the first yeah, place. For sure. That's just yeah. something they told John Hammond. And it wasn't like they were yeah. mass producing him there at that little visitor center thing either. Yeah, well. Well, we meet, this is where we, as at the base of operations, getting ready to leave, this is where we meet Nick, the war journalist and activist photographer. He's played by Vince Vaughn, and he's there to be the guy that takes the pictures. And when he gets there, it doesn't seem that. He even knows where they're going because he's like, well, you know, Ian says, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, well, I'm here because John Hammond's check cleared. Otherwise, I wouldn't be even going on this wild goose chase. He goes, well, this is where we're going. is the only place where the geese chase you. <laughs> okay. Well, they That's chase not true. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of YouTube videos out there yep. of people That's just right. getting mauled by yes. geese. They will. How many yeah. geese do you think you could take? <laughs> like, I'm not messing around with a goose. <laughs> not not one no. goose? No. Fewer than no. chickens. Oh, come on. That I long have, neck, I, I got two hands. I'm going to tell you right now. There was some guy in my hometown. <laughs> He got attacked by some by some Canada goose that he was he was yeah. studying these things and they turned his legs into Swiss cheese, oh. just taking chunks of flesh out of him. Nope. If I see a goose, I'm why did out. he have shorts on? I don't think he did. He, through his jeans? Yes. All right, we got to. All right, that's. Don't fight geese, people. Don't, no. If you've learned anything today, yeah. Yeah. stay away from geese uh, and roosters. 
We also meet Eddie, played by Richard Schiff, who loves tranquilizer guns, and she's the guy that shows us the high hide, and he's like the brainy guy in, in the operation here, the tech guy. And then we meet uh, Ian's daughter, Kelly, shows up, and uh, he's immediately pushing her off onto a babysitter, and she doesn't want to go to her dumb babysitter because she doesn't even have Sega. And, uh, you know, <laughs> what a bad babysitter. <laughs> How dare that babysitter? It's one of many scenes that I was like, can we fast forward <laughs> through the scene? Thanks. But there's so much exposition yeah. to lay out right. because he's, you know, dad, I got cut from the gymnastics team. Everybody got that? That's important for later. Yep. Right. Okay. Hopefully gotta, they've got a pommel horse later. Got to lay the tracks down yep. for all this stuff. And, you know, she gives him the guilt trip about. You know, you're never around. And then he goes, I'm not the one that he actually gets mad and says that dumps you here and left for Paris. And, you know, so we get a little color on the backstory of who I mean, barely we don't even really know much about. We don't it. care. Right. Also, yeah, don't really care. Invested. There's a good dose of that. But uh, that's, you know, him dealing with his daughter as he's trying to leave. She goes in while they're all getting ready and she sneaks into the giant trailer they're going to be taking with them. Like it's like an RV from hell. It's like awesome. It's like a like two RVs put together by like a flexible part in the middle is like turns. It's like one of them big it. buses you'd see in yeah. Chicago or yes. something yeah. with the extra. And so she goes inside and she sneaks in there and she starts going, "This is so cool. I'm watching it with my 14-year-old son." And Grant goes, "You know what else is cool? Minding your own business." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Very true. That's also true. <laughs> yeah, that, I was like, absolutely, man. Also, couldn't she bring her Sega with her? Yeah, right. You just how hard is it to unplug your Genesis and plug it back in at the babysitter? Bring it with. Bring it's it not. With. It's how many of the younger fans have no idea what we're talking about right now? Because the Dreamcast, <laughs> what in like '98, just killed Sega yeah, as a yeah. console. Yeah. Thankfully for us, we don't have many younger fans. Mm -hmm. So the Sega Genesis, <laughs> or at this point '97, but maybe it was the Sega CD. I don't know what was happening. Yeah, it was probably Sega CD but at that point. That those were old school home video account, uh, video game consoles that competed with Super Nintendo and N sixty four and weren't as good. So an old school gaming console, Nintendo uh, would, for life, would be like a Nintendo <laughs> Switch, but it couldn't pick it up and have a screen on it. Right, well, it except you have did have the, what was the what was the Sega version of the Game Boy. Oh, it was the, uh, the uh, I don't know what it was called. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. They had their own handheld. But that one was MC? actually pretty good because it was yeah. a color yeah. screen. Yep. And, yeah. Nice. That no, wasn't bad. It yeah. was, but, but when they came out with that, the Game Boy was like, oh, suddenly we looked Oops. Like, yep. Yeah, and then they had to come out quick with Game Boy Color. With the cut yes. Game Boy Color, yeah. In the commercials, they would just yell Sega at you. Sega! Yeah. 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 Sega! Bully Sega now! Go Sega! Uh, all right, so they ride on the boat. They get on this boat, and I'm pretty sure that boat was never going to pick them up, as I said before. They spend the rest of the movie trying to get a hold of the boat, and the boat is uh, uh, gone. Well, <laughs> to be <laughs> fair. Busy, or, uh, no comprende. Uh, no habla uh, espanol. Like, like, no matter an, what. It was like an Uber. <laughs> boat. Like they were just like, we're taking you there, but then we got to go deliver yeah, yeah, other stuff. You, you, well, they said we're going to go anchor and just call us when we're ready. I'm like, yeah. those guys are yeah, gone. Check to, check us out on the app. To be you fair, know, though, they – before they even get onto the island, yeah, when they're still on mainland, Ian can't get the satellite phone to work. Right, that's true. Yeah, and so they already are establishing that the satellite phone just and he's like because they got a little dish and the other people will come later have a big dish and they have dish envy. There's a whole little <laughs> plot point about this, right? Ladies like a big dish, and they're just like you know, no, you gotta love it. Love, you know, violence and technology doesn't you know doesn't not a good combination. Not a good combination, man. Eddie's always trying to tell him you got to want things to work. You got to love them, man. You got to love them, take care of them. I don't think that's how that works. They uh, they get on the island, and it, this transition from not being on the island to being on the island is like lightning quick. Yeah. Right. Like. Where was border and customs? <laughs> None of that gone. Also, because they would have found that girl the hiding in there. <laughs> Well, okay, we could have mind. saved ourselves from the plot line of like, hey, we got to have a kid anytime it's death defined. Does this gymnast belong to anybody? That yeah. little, <laughs> they were on a pretty small boat. Yeah. So where is the freaking RV? I don't know because it cuts from the boat shot to them driving the RV on the Unless island. Unless there was one that was already put there when they yeah. dropped Julian. Really They're just off. fixing yeah. a different one. They're like, this is for this is for uh, movie three. Yeah. Jurassic Park claw marks. This is what this one's for. <laughs> Working title, claw Working marks. Title. Um, but they get there. They're immediately tracking Sarah's satellite phone, which they find within 30 seconds. And she didn't mm -hmm. hear them. And, and she was four seconds away. She was as well. right there on the other side of the tree. Yep. I don't um, think she would have had the phone on. No. So, 
wouldn't have worked. And her backpack looks like it's all chewed up. But right. it yeah. turn, turns out it's her lucky backpack. So she got attacked by geese. Piece of crap or whatever. Or she got attacked by geese. And uh, they find, and they well, the first they find the backpack, and they, this is actually one of the funniest parts of me. They start yelling, Sarah! And then Vince Vaughn goes, Sarah Harding! <laughs> how many, how many <laughs> Sarahs are on this island? Uh, also, we don't know if the dinosaurs named themselves. Right. They yeah. like so proper okay. names that we Sarah and a, and, a, and a stegosaurus walks over. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Triceratops yep. stops eating. No, I'm Try sorry. what, Tops? <laughs> Triceratops. Oh! Back her up. That was free, everybody. No charge. So, Jeff Goldblum's yell for Sarah in this yeah. scene, I don't think he wanted to find her. He's like, Sarah. All right. Like, Nick was the one that was really yeah, trying nothing, to find Nothing. Like, no heart in it at None all. At I don't think all. he was looking forward to that conversation. Uh, <laughs> we do see, and this is where Nick and everybody, everybody but Ian is suddenly aghast at the stegosaurus is walking across this little stream. And and this is probably the most well-known line in the entire movie, right, is when they're all going, oh, my gosh, ooh. And then Jeff Golden goes, oh, yeah, yeah, ooh, ah, that's how it starts. But later yeah. there's uh, running, <laughs> running and, and uh, screaming. screaming. <laughs> <laughs> and then he asks them, too, he's like, what, what did you think you were going to see? <laughs> Vince Vaughn? <laughs> I don't know. Birds? Big, 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 big <laughs> iguanas? Know. Something like that. Like, yeah, these are real big iguanas, man. <laughs> and I was happy that they put stegosaurs in this one because that was always one of my favorite dinosaurs when I was a kid. Because yeah. they got the cool like row of plates and then the spikes on their tail. S- Dude, Laura's Stegos- favorite. Yeah. Dope, man. Laura's favorite? Yeah. I yeah, love Stegosaurus. Cool. Like, um, Milwaukee Public Museum had, I don't know if they still do, it's been yeah. years since I've been there, but they had like a uh, scene of like a T-Rex eating a Stegosaurus in there. Nice. I always liked nice. the Stegosaurus, man. They were badass. They were cool, dude. Yeah. Did you know their brains were only like this big? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're tiny. It's crazy. Little, they had the tiny little heads. Yeah. I was, I just thought about Tommy Boy when I was watching it, right? <laughs> it was another fat dinosaur with a tiny head. <laughs> I I it's just head. the wrinkles that you have in your brain, not how big it is. Oh, that's true. You never true. know. They could have been doing quadratic equations. Super, Mine's really yeah. smooth. A raisin brain. Oh, no. It was tiny but super wrinkly. <laughs> I, I caught that when we first met. You say yours is really <laughs> smooth? I was like, there's nobody with a smoother brain in this group than this guy here. That's what I tell the ladies. Man. Hey, you into guys with smooth brains? <laughs> never works. <laughs> See something shiny, walks away. <laughs> oh, it's like a pearl. Yeah. Um, all right, so... Sarah, can I just say because Sarah is standing right there, not even reacting to the fact that her friends are there, they're just you know, screaming pictures, for her. Screaming at her. She's my least favorite character, and I don't know if anyone else agrees with me, but she's yeah, w- just and I'll illuminate this as we go through it. But just starting off, she's way too chill about being on this island, and she's kind of like John Hammond and like giving that Jurassic Park energy of what's the big deal? It's totally fine. It's all good. She's well, also the biggest hypocrite in the world. Heck yes, because she goes. We have to observe and not change. We cannot interact. But let's right before, touch its face like yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> right before she pets a baby stegosaurus. Yeah. Don't yeah. smoke. <laughs> right. But while, meanwhile, I'm going to molest this <laughs> dinosaur over here. Meanwhile, for, you I should smoke here. Yeah. I'm going to put all my scent all over this baby stegosaurus so we get hunted down by stegosauruses later. Yeah. Yep. She said it presence has to be antiseptic. Right. Is that, is that anis- maybe? I'm not no, a I didn't say any like hand she sanitizer before right. she petted right. the, touched him right on his yeah. face. Right? Yeah. Human germs are right on this baby yeah. stegosaurus and she, she also said, if we so much as touch a blade of grass, and then stump, 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 stump. Continues walking through the grass. Yeah. She sucks, man. There are, there are three key pieces of information that only she knows. Right. That she blatantly disregards throughout yes. this movie. Throughout the movie. Yeah. I know, it's crazy. She's just fangirling over the dinosaurs, I guess. It, uh, you know, and I'm just, I'm just now dawning on me, too. Yeah. Like... What a piss poor partner, because <laughs> Jeff Goldblum, right, would have talked to her about this traumatic experience yeah, that he went yeah. through. Yeah. And yep. as soon as she has the chance, she doesn't tell him about it. She probably knows that he's going to be lured there by her being there. Right. Completely disregards everything that he's talked about by right. being like, oh, yeah, I'll take this call from John Hammond. Right. Yeah. And, and, and when she sees him, you would think she would have some kind of reaction like, oh, my gosh, you're here. And I know this is going to be really hard for you. But she's like, just kind of smiles at him like, hey, man, she, and like just no she, recognition yeah. of she, what he went she through. She Tom Arnold's him. Yeah. yeah. Hey, sorry, all your friends. Hey, sorry, sorry, our friends got eaten by dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> so as always, it's the question of was it directing? Did they cut out a chunk that made it make sense? Well, I don't think it's Julianne Moore's fault, but the yeah. character's terrible. Yeah. So it's either on the editing or the script, yeah. you know, one or the other, right? But. We all know Julianne Moore is a talented person. Mm-hmm. So wasn't this one of her very 
first big roles though? Well, I know he hired her based off her little role in The Fugitive. Yeah, is what oh. Steven Spielberg had said. So I liked how she was like, the, you know, a doctor in like one scene, yeah. two yeah. scenes, and hired her off of that for this. And then so. same thing with Vince Vaughn. Like he had to go to like an early this one is screening of Swingers roles, yeah. or something yeah. because they were going to use the theme to Jaws. Yeah, and then he was like, oh yeah. I'm going to get this guy, too. So you just never know yeah. how things... Uh, one job tends to lead to the next job. Uh, so anyway. So for all you directors who are listening and watching... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is what I... Let's let's, leave, let's have this job lead to another job right. for Nicole. Let's Thank do you. it. Anyway, she's, so she's petting this Stegosaurus, and it's wonderful. You know, it's, But it, not the animatronic. That's not wonderful. No, that's not wonderful. <laughs> the situation, she's like, oh, that's wonderful, but it's just like a grizzly bear, right? Like, yeah, it's great until the mom shows up. I'm like, who is yeah. you? You know, right? <laughs> well, I mean, our, our Stegosaurus is like other birds where if you touch them they just kick that bird out of the nest i mean is that what the stegosaurus would have done yeah that's what i was gonna that's not that's not true though but i was gonna say it's an old wives tale i believe well growing up though we had cats which i know not the same thing but we had cats and if you touch the babies too young the mom cat like this mom cat at least would eat the babies right but a cat (gasps) would eat your face if you died in the house and you didn't get fed for dinner uh dogs would eat you too but the dogs are something like half as likely to eat you as a cat and it's gonna take longer yeah for sure, but they'll both eat. You. They'll hump you when you're dead. Still, yeah. they'll still go after yeah. that leg. But all right. for sure. <laughs> uh, all right. So they, this is educational. Here's right the other here. thing: when the Stegosaurus get pissed off because her camera starts making noise, and they start swing. She's so casual about dodging these tail swings with the freaking yeah. giant. She's just like, oh, it's still magical to me. Whoo, oh. Maybe oh, she, maybe she went to paleontology school on a on a gymnastic scholarship, sure, and that's sure. how they were able to bond. It maybe. is hard. I, I'm sure you know soundstage and green screen. I know, but. Little, Tennis, tennis ball yeah. but this is one of the biggest differences, and I was going to say it later, I'll just say it now, between Jurassic Park 1 and 2, and I think Roger Ebert said something to this effect, which I think is perfect, is that uh, Pete Postlethwaite is the only person who is acting like he's on an island of dinosaurs and everyone else is acting like they're on a soundstage. Huh. And yeah. Yeah. And the first movie really captured the sense of awe and like, oh my gosh, there's freaking dinosaurs. In every single scene, you believed that these guys were like, holy crap, dinosaurs. I didn't get that at all in this movie. Right. No, I mean, even that first scene when they pull up and they see the dinosaurs for the first time, yeah. you know, and Laura Dern is just inspecting that leaf. And then all of a sudden, he, you know, yeah. Sam Neill, who's like this totally like yeah. by the book, straight, like he just seems like he's the total straight man. He just like gets up, like pulls yeah. the glasses up, grabs her by the top mm-hmm. of the head, you know, Wibble. like yeah, like, it's great. Yes, and there's and they're looking at nothing, right? But they sold it, and no one sells it in this movie besides Pete. Not even not even Ian, uh, or not even Jeff. Jeff is like doing a half jog through most of this. His dialogue is great. He's like, you're still getting full Jeff Goldblum, but in the intense action scenes, it's just not. It's not even there for me personally. Oh. And I just wonder because the first to me, yeah, the first Jurassic Park wasn't great because of the dinosaurs. It was because no. of the suspense. Yeah. And it was because they had chemistry amongst pretty much the entire cast. Yeah. Like everybody you you could feel tension, yeah. you know, when you had like Sam Jackson and and Wayne Knight and Richard Attenborough yeah. like trying to figure out what's going on with the fences, right? And you had that chemistry, that that awkward tension between Sam mm-hmm. Neill and Laura Dern and and Jeff Goldblum yep. and all the characters, you could see that there was that tension. And yeah. it was the other thing, too, that Jurassic Park 2 and Jaws 2 both did. Yeah. Part of what makes the dinosaurs or the shark your scary villain yeah. is that you don't see them. Right. Mm-hmm. It is the unknown quantity of it. It's the suspense of when they show up. And you and care about yes. the people who That's might get chomped. The big <laughs> yeah. I wanted <laughs> everyone to get eaten. There was a... <laughs> yeah. and, it's not it's I don't think it's bad. I think there there's still a lot to enjoy in this movie, but and there are still characters I did care about, but instead of I cared about all of them in the last one, I care about a few of them right. in this one, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. I think that there's like a sense of like talking about all the characters working together well and what mm-hmm. in number one. I think there's a sense of these people all have a history together. You can see that they know each other. You feel like they all know each other. Yeah. Um and just you kind of know who that person is. Whereas in this one, it's like 
I'm this character. Right, they like tell you. Like Nick so many times just tells everybody who his character is, you know, which isn't Vince Vaughn's fault, right? But it's just right. like, right. you know, we oh. don't really know anything about that guy until he tells us who he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, though, so the scene with the Stegosaurus. Yeah. Eddie pulls out his little sniper rifle. His train gun. Train yeah. gun. And he's like, they're just defending their baby. I know. He talked a whole thing on the boat about how if they get out of control, we just hit him with one of these. And then here's his chance to save Sarah's life. He's like. I'm not going to shoot these things. She told me not to. <laughs> Which, Dinos honestly, before hose, bro. That that could have that, that yeah. could be real and that I yeah. could see that a character saying that if he had a change of heart and they showed us he went in an arc from A to B. Yes. But it it, it wasn't done in a way that we went, "Oh, he is a changed person." No. Or, well, cuz A was 5 minutes before B in this case, right? Like yeah. they were literally on the boat coming yeah. over. Yeah. They just they were they tried to hit you so hard over the head with the foreshadowing in this one too, yeah. like laying so many and it's one of the best things that ever happened in Jurassic in the original Jurassic Park was the foreshadowing of when Alan Grant can't get his seatbelt buckled and then yes. he takes to two female ends and ties them together yes. and <laughs> lets you know that like this is this gonna is... be but you have to understand what's being done there is it's his two female yeah. ends that he's still finding a way to make the seatbelt yes. work. Oh see I didn't even think about it that way. That's so smart dude. Yeah. So that's the same thing that's yeah. going on in the rest of the movie. So it's like they had Cleverer dialogue yes. in the first one, and there is some good dialogue in this. There one. is, but but it's not the same. It's not the same. You're right. Nature finds a way. Yeah, there's two. Females. There's epic. There's some epic dialogue in the first. I feel like all the good dialogue in this one is funny. Yeah, where like most of the awesome dialogue in the first one is epic things like like Ian's rant about whether or not you could about the um, life finds a way. Right? You know yeah. all that stuff. Ian was un. Uh, it felt unintentionally humorous in yes. one, whereas this one, every line he said, it felt like was the punchline, and he was, yeah, like the character was trying. It was just the script, yeah. but he was trying to make it all funny. Is, is which, that? Uh, go ahead. I was just going to ask. Is that because he has like a a little bit more of a, a flippant attitude, and and by that I mean like. I already know what's going to happen. I'm telling you guys what's going to yeah. happen, and it's happening right now again. No, I think there's something. There's some of it is born out of his like we've done this before, and I can't believe I'm here and all of that. And so it makes sense to have his character do that. And I think because Jeff Goldblum is so talented, even though it might seem more intentional humor, he still sells the crap out yeah. of it. That's the only thing that he does that really works for this. But uh, they get back to the RV. Camp. Speaking of other stupid things that happen, they get back to the RV camp and they're like, uh, who started this fire? And out <laughs> comes the daughter from the RV. I just wanted to make everybody a snack before they got back. This is totally fine that I'm here. Right? Like she just outs herself. Like it's not going to be a big deal. I mean, to be fair, I don't think she knew that they were going to an island with dinosaurs. Well, she looked at that map. It looked really secret and special. <laughs> right? Yeah. And assuming she knew the name of the other map, because right. it said the other island on yeah. there right yeah. by it, right? I don't know. These were heavily armored, <laughs> mostly heavily armored. We'll get to that. Yeah. RVs. Yeah. She's old enough to understand, like, this could be, we're going to a war zone. Yeah. We're Who going knows? someplace exactly. where shit's going to go wrong. Because right. yeah. he's literally telling you not to come. And he must have been the chillest parent of all time, okay? Because I would have <laughs> lost it if my kid came to Dino Island yep. yeah. with me. Go right back inside. You close the door. <laughs> you wrap yourself in two mattresses with tape and don't come right? out. He was just like, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, we talked about this. <gasps> yeah. What are you getting? You can't really got to listen to me. I'm like, bro, I would have been DEFCON 10 if my child and had come with me to, to, I guess, to Dino Island. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, a little bit, though, too, he's, it didn't seem like he was... Father of the Year material, no, though, either kind no, no, of that's true. Maybe that before, fits. and he just wanted. Yeah. he almost wanted to be more like the her friend. friend. Yeah. yeah, no, I think it rang true. I'm not criticizing the choice. No, I mean, no, it, no. it rang true to his character. I was just putting myself in that yeah, yeah. moment. No, going, no, absolutely. I'd oh be like, gosh. "What the hell are you doing here?" <laughs> like, I'm also not entirely lost. convinced. I might that just he... throw my kid in the ocean to swim back, like <laughs> right. you swim back. Put him on a rowboat and anchor it right. ten feet off the shore. I mean, who knows what medications he was given to deal with that PTSD? That's true. Right fair. Maybe that's why his performance. Day has the peens and SNRIs going on. He could just. I did like this part where they're all starting to talk science stuff, and Ian is like, "I'm leaving. Any messages you'd like me to pass on to your next of kin? Uh, any personal? <laughs> effects? They're all talking over him, right? And he's like, "Any personal effects you'd like to have trans? And he, he just he doesn't. They, he thinks they're all gonna die, and no one is listening to him. Could be the other what reason why he's so chilly. He's just like, when I, it, it's gonna happen. He's, he's I'm like, just at peace now. I know how That's to get away point. from dinosaurs. None of these people yeah, right. do. I'm going to be okay. He's trying to call the boat. Again, the boat is, he's like, no, no, like somebody answers. It's not the boat. You know, he's like, I'm trying to breach the guy in the boat. Sarah goes in the RV and stops him for a heart to heart conversation. 
but it's really like, listen, you're a horrible boyfriend. You never show up to anything. And uh, I don't need you right now. So I love you, but I don't need you. Um, does, and this is the point where I'm like, tell me, Ian, you realize that she's dating you to get to Dino Island. And now that she has, she's like, get out of here. I don't need you anymore. So funny. I hadn't made that yeah. connection. Yeah. I just thought like it was just a terribly stupid relationship. <laughs> 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 That's it. Well, Ian even calls out. He's like, well, this is just all great material for your book, isn't right. it? Right. Like he's yeah. he's calling it out mm-hmm. yeah. as like, you're just it's, here for that. For it your seems career. so obvious that she doesn't give a crap about him. And then this was all to further her career and to get onto Dino Island. And then he gets there and she goes, go ahead and leave. I don't need you. Well, she doesn't even care that his daughter's there. Like, she no, doesn't... she doesn't. Get... She's like, ah, what's the big deal again Like with her? He goes, don't team up, don't team up on me. Not about this. You know? How does she not understand that these, like even a horse is... Wow, I said horse really weird there. But even a horse is it's like smooth super, brain. super dangerous, right? Yes, a horse can be dangerous. Like yes. when my like my kids are six, so kind of goose, six and seven or whatever, and, and a chicken, you're a, yeah. over. It's over. When like they're around the horses at my parents' house, I'm like really watching them because like it's one right. step away from death, right? right. Like and th- from having a cross-eyed kid. Chill. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Or and then dead. they fall down a well. Like, Did a horse kick the wrinkles out of your brain when you were a youth? And that's, <laughs> that's, your concern that's actually now? what happened. I fell okay. off too many times. <laughs> just checking. You rocked it and it smoothed <laughs> out. Yeah, like a ripple. Out. A ripple across. Well, you see, <laughs> we too are scientists. My part runs right along here. <laughs> no. And if I dent this, it's yeah, exactly. my hair is just not going to sit right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, oh. All right. So we see that the InGem team of psychopaths has now flown in, and they got chopper and you know jeeps and our, their own rvs and all this like james you, you pronounce chopper wrong can you fix that Joppa. thank you go ahead and they you know they've got these like uh, remember the ghost but the new ghostbusters uh, ecto one where the seats come out the side they got these like fishing jeeps where they're fishing for dinosaurs and mm-hmm. they're literally they they land and they're immediately in the middle of a herd of dinosaurs trying to rope them and they're not surprised chase or full of awe whatsoever no they're just like no. they knew exactly what they were going they're there like, just, to do this is just like the rodeo in cheyenne right. yeah and i still it, feel there should have been something just some like kinda, i'm actually here. Oh wow. my gosh, these are real. Ah. I, I mean, they told me, but this is yep. crazy. Something, no, right? Like, I've seen buffalo, but the first time I stood next to a buffalo, I was yeah. like, oh my God, like that thing is actually huge. Yep. Right. Like, even if you know what you're going into, right. I got to imagine this, you, you can't perceive that size. No. And and the first the first guy, I, this, or this, I should say, this is where Nick was like, this is why they, or no, Ian goes, this, see, I'm so all, all over the place. This is where Ian goes, this is why the, Richard wanted us to come because Richard is the actor. John wanted us to come because <laughs> he knew they were coming, right? Basically, mm-hmm. and this yeah. is it. And this is where we meet uh, Pete Postlewaite's character. Is it Trembo? I think it's Trembo is the guy's yeah. name. Mm-hmm. And he has this incredible monologue because the uh, Peter Ludlow, the the crappy lawyer that Ian was yelling at earlier in the movie, is there leading this expedition. And he turns around to him in the jeep after he. You know, basically says something so like, "Let's set up camp by these predators or whatever," and he gives this incredible monologue, and I just have it here because I didn't, I can't do it justice, and I think it's awesome. Peter, if you want me to run your little camping trip, there are two conditions. Firstly, I'm in charge, and when I'm not around, Dieter is. All you need to do is sign the checks, tell us we're doing a good job, and open your case of scotch when we have a good day. Second condition, my fee. You can keep it. All I want in exchange for my services is the right to hunt one of the tyrannosaurs, a male, a buck only. How and why are my business? Now, if you don't like either of those two conditions, you're on your own. So go ahead, set up base camp right here, or in a swamp, or in the middle of a wreck's nest, for all I care. But I've been on too many safaris with rich dentists to listen to any more suicidal ideas. Okay. <laughs> but hunting a T-Rex isn't a suicidal idea. <laughs> no, well, he says he's the second greatest predator, and he needs to hunt the greatest predator, okay. right? I... It, it, on the paper, I don't know if it's a great line. It's kind of like, here's everything you need to know about my character, and I know everything about this guy. But he sells it so well and delivers it in such an awesome way that it works even if the line is kind of ham-fisted. Absolutely. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's so great. Yep. And Spielberg, I saw a quote from him that basically called P, by the way, the, one of the greatest actors on the planet. He loved this guy. Put him in Amistad right after this. And those are the only two movies he did with Spielberg. But... I love this guy, and I thought he killed this part. And what a great introduction to a character. Yep. And immediately you're like, this guy means business, yep. and he's a force to be reckoned yeah. with. Mm-hmm. I, f- I finally was like, okay, now I'm back, and I might watch with that. I fast-forwarded a little bit. <laughs> <this movie. laughs> I don't think you missed anything. Right, yeah. yeah. He, well, he, he kind of brought that 
that uh, Muldoon effect to the movie when yeah. he shows up. Muldoon. Right. Muldoon. Yeah, no, for sure. And he's basically, and the fact that he's saying all this to a guy that we already hate, to this lawyer, right? Yeah. And we're just like, yeah. Even better. Yeah, shut up, Peter, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, rich, de- and you just know this guy's led expeditions with all these rich crybabies, and, and he's just had it. And this is like his moment to finally do, like, hunt down the biggest thing, and he's not letting this guy put them in a situation where they're all going to get killed or do anything stupid. And I love that I, th- right after this, they're driving down that plane, there's all these dinosaurs, and he, he's got, like, the flip chart of all the different dinos, and he can't figure out what the hell any of them are called, <laughs> and he ends up just chucking the thing yeah. and, like, making up names right. for the dinosaurs. I thought yeah. that was great. The big one with the red horn. That's right. <laughs> Elvis, right? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Friar Pompadour. Tuck. <laughs> in our house, any bird is just a duck until you can figure out what it's called. So that works, too. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. I love how Friar Tuck, uh, which is was a Pachyosaur, I think Pachyosaurus, mm-hmm. this is a dude with the dome heads. I love how that thing puts a dude through a Jeep while some yeah. guy is spouting facts about him. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he can lower his neck into a perfect battering ram with an, and right out, like right on cue, just like this, poof, like he heard him. J- just like the 80s <laughs> song describing what's going on in the scene. Yes. You got the... The narrator. Talking about Down Under by Men at Work. Right, yeah. Oh Six foot four and full of muscles. <laughs> that a strange lady. Yeah. She would, you, would you think of that guy? Duffy is his name, I think, in, in the room. Oh, the guy, the guy that's like the, cowboy, the long hair cowboy guy that just oh, knows Mox's everything. Mox's dad. Is that who From that was? From Varsity Blues. Is yeah. that Mox's dad? Yes. <laughs> so as soon as he comes on the screen, I'm just like, I don't want your, your life. <laughs> And I just I have a hard time with him not having a broken nose well, with for all the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. Beard and hair, it's hard yes. to see. It'd be like, imagine seeing somebody seeing you clean shaven. Yeah. And then like this, they probably wouldn't realize it was the same. Yeah, person. I look like Jordan Vandersloot. I've had to kill <laughs> Matt <Natalie> Holloway <laughs> when I shave off the beard. Awesome. It's, it's not good. Do That's that, why then. I keep the beard on. Which, by the way, which is why it was weird for me to see Richard Schiff without a beard. Yeah. Yes. And then he was smiling, and I was confused because it's a whole different human. <laughs> totally different yeah. person. Yeah. yeah, he's always West had a beard. I'm like, I had to do a double take. Yep. Like, yeah. Richard Schiff is in this? Is yeah. that Richard Schiff? Yeah. Twas. It, that was Eddie. And so then we also see, uh, so that he referenced in that monologue, Dieter is in charge when he's not there. And we meet Dieter, and I was like, yes, Peter Stomare is in this yeah. movie. Yeah. I love every time this guy shows up in anything. Dude was in Constantine. He played the devil when we were doing that movie. He's yeah. also in The Last Stand. Is it Stormare? Yeah. It's Stomare. It is, okay. Because we used to say the other way, yeah. and I have had about a thousand people comment oh, thank you. on things yeah. being, this is not how you say it. So I actually looked up a video of him, of Peter himself in an interview explaining how to pronounce his name. So this is, so if you criticize me after this one, shut your face, because <laughs> this is how the man himself said his name, Stomare, is how it's pronounced, okay? Gotcha. Yeah, That's it's kind of like Seagull. Right. Wait. Like Seagull. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So as they're, as they're, the, the, they're chasing these dinosaurs down, he's like, this, the one with the pompadour, Elvis, is the mm-hmm. next one they get down. And then this is where we finally meet Peter, who's off on the side, who, like I said, I'm always thrilled to see. And this guy, his favorite, Dieter's favorite thing is to tase little dinosaurs in the face, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. He's got like a cattle prod, and then one of the little ones that attacked the little girl is just like checking out his sneaker. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. he's like, it's weird. They're not even scared. He's like, well, they're, you know, man has never been here right. before. Why would they be scared of man? They have no reason to be. And just tases this thing right in the grill. <laughs> okay. He does now. <laughs> he does now. <laughs> I'm like, this This dude's like, well, I'm going to go get my boys. Yeah, I'm going to go tell them. I'm going to be back telling, Mama. right? Uh-huh. I thought about Kevin Hart because he's little. Yeah. He's 40 year old virgin. He's like, yeah. I'll get my boys. Uh, yeah. Both y'all I'll getting clapped out. <laughs> 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 Oh, All good. y'all getting messed up. So good. That's what I was thinking about oh, immediately. Excellent. All right. Uh, this is when Trembo's like, all right, I'm going to collect my fee. He sees the, the Rex print, and he's like, I'm going to get you know this T-Rex with my boy here. And they get right up to a nest with a baby T-Rex. So what does a psychopath do in this situation? <laughs> take Break the its ba- leg. Take the baby, and you tie it down <laughs> in the middle of a... St- and you sit in a tree, and you wait for it like you're deer hunting or fishing, but it's a freaking T-Rex. And it's meaner, because you're just breaking <laughs> its baby first. Right. And you're just laying and this thing out here in the middle of the road. They're at eye level with a T-Rex in the tree. And they're 10 feet away from the baby. Yeah. It's like not even that far away. Like... 300 feet and snipe the thing. Yeah, I mean, right. well, you, know, I mean, you do what you got to do if snipe. you don't have a goat. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. It's fun. They used a camel, yeah. a baby camel to do the baby oh, T Rex for, for the noises. Oh. Yeah. It was That's a baby camel calling for its mom because they took its mom away from it. And they're like, here, now we can record this. Yeah. This is our T Rex. <gasps> That's really? awful. Yeah. 
no harm, no animals were harmed in making this movie my ass. Except the camel. Mentally, they were. <laughs> For sure. All right. In Jen's camp is set up after their six. Uh, they got already got a stegosaurus in a cage. You got all these dinos in the cage, and they're already like making TikTok videos, you know, about like live on Dino Island. What's up, guys? We're here. We it's already got your some. Boy. <laughs> we got some. Yo, check this dino out, this little baby one. We, we call this big, little spiky. That's right. We got the big ones. We're going to go around camp. We're going to show you. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Smash it. Smash we it. We are live. Oh, thank you in the chat. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, for the person in the chat, we are going to be opening a dino zoo in San Diego. We've got four dinosaurs we caught. We're already opening a zoo. We just got a $200 sub. Thank you Thank for that. You. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go twerk. <laughs> I would have loved to have had David Attenborough come in and be like, here we have <laughs> humans thinking that they are going to always dominate and not recognizing that they are going oh. to be eating themselves soon. I have a question. I can't though. believe when they pitched the, they already had the mock-up. They pitched a zoo. I'm like, there's these people. Every movie, it's the same. Yeah. The Stegosaurus's cage mm -hmm. was dome-shaped over the Stegosaurus. Yeah. How mm -hmm. the hell did they get the Stegosaurus inside the cage? Because when they open the door, oh, you're it's right, just a little door. They slip it's, something in its, it's drink. shallow when it comes in. It in. It'd have to be tall at the back and to the front. <laughs> the right? front would have to be tall, yeah, so he yeah. could climb out. And how would you back it in? Like, the whole thing would just have to be a big box. Back it, it was up, completely it pointless to manufacture that cage to be that shape. Why wouldn't you just have it a huge cage so you could fit whatever Dang dino it, this you whole want? thing is ridiculous. That's it. I'm out. It's a setup! Oh. Out of order! They used the high hide, and then they just dropped it on top <laughs> of this. <laughs> yeah. like a, like it was like a, mouse trap. Like a yeah. Yeah. Like, yes. Like, oh. oh. It never worked. It never no. it worked in engine. It was like wiggling the thing. <laughs> just. Drop on the mouse. The only time it ever worked is when you accidentally bumped it before you played the game. And then set it back up. All the way down. And then I would smash it. And that was the end of the day. It's true. Forget this. I want a fruit roll up. Mid video. So Nick, this is when Nick was like, I'm the backup plan. Just so you guys know, John Hammond sent me to be the backup plan. He's got like pliers. That's it. Yeah. That's it. A wrench and a dream. A wrench and a dream. That's it. how America was built. They go around and snip the bolts on all of these dino cages, which are locked with padlocks from Ace Hardware. Yep. The yeah. only you know? <laughs> thing Nick is doing for 90% of these cages, too, is just pulling a he's, bolt out. He's, yeah, he's pulling like, the he pen. had to send me to, I'm a good bolt puller. <laughs> like, well, there was one that had a padlock, but you're yeah. right. Most of them just had a bolt. But like, but even the padlock was like the one you get off the rack. You know how is saying? this guy a specialist? All yeah. he's doing is clipping. I don't know. He's the final I'm, solution. Ian Malcolm's not going to do it. No. Yeah, that's fair. So they left the Triceratops. I was so happy. I think I told you guys this when we did Jurassic Park. That's my favorite dinosaur, and I'm sad all we got to see was him laying on its side being sick. So when they let the Triceratops out, in mid-TikTok video, this Triceratops just rolls a freaking Jeep through the middle of the shot and starts rampaging. I was just like, yes. <laughs> I was you imagine how like, many people would get on live for that? Dude, these <laughs> things are like tanks, man. Yeah. Dude. And I, oh, it's awesome. Throws a Jeep across. Then we cut back to our boys in the tree trying to hunt the T-Rex, and a flaming car comes flying 200 feet in the air and landing directly on the tree. They're able to jump out of the way, Trembo and the other guy. Hey, you know but what? The, who they, chucked the car? I mean, but you got to give them some credit here, right? Usually the car crashes and then it explodes into flames. <laughs> in this one, it yeah. gets hit. Yes. And then flies already in flames. Right. So. I wonder, there's a big explosion. The change of the trope. I don't know. <laughs> no, there's right. a big explosion beforehand, though, and that's what chucks the car. So the explosion. I thought right. like a dinosaur was just like, watch this crap. Just Chuck Norris. One of the little compies <laughs> throws it. Just yeah. chucked a Jeep. The Stegosaurus hit I know the gas those... tank with its spikes. and I know where those dudes are in that tree. Better it's like Planet of the Apes. And there's yeah. actually like, now these dinos are learning catapult technology. <laughs> and they're just shooting. It's got a trebuchet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Evolution is on yeah. speed. Life will That's find awesome. a way. Quickly. <laughs> Very quickly. Nick rescues the baby T-Rex. Okay. Again, like those are the backup. Yeah. Dumb. And conservation that, should be wanting to conserve what should be, not comes what up, nightmare has been created. Comes up with it nuzzled in his arms to Sarah, who chastises him and says, This is stupid, this is crazy, and gives him a hard time for doing and interfering. Now and put then, it in the Jeep. Now put it in the Jeep and let's take it back to the mm -hmm. RV. Mm -hmm. Again, she's a hypocrite. You know how T Rex can smell really good? Yeah. Let's bring their baby yeah. with us. They bring it back to the RV camp. Not the one on the outskirts where the carnivores don't go, which is what ruins this whole thing. 
This one decision. Yep. I and mean, you could argue that they pulling the, the baby out to hunt might have ruined it, but they didn't pull it to the outskirts of the island. Nick and Sarah's dumbasses did that. Yeah. Okay. And they were, you're an idiot. Why can't all right, come on, let's yeah. go. Let's do well, it. We got to fix this leg. I got to ultrasound this dinosaur because I'm a dinosaur doctor. Does Sarah go around and like find every dinosaur that's hurt in the island and try to help them? Nope. No. It's some BS. It is, dude. And again, her not being demonstrating a lot of smarts makes me go, why was Ian <laughs> with her? I, and I feel like he's, he's so smart. But in, in the net community, he's got that 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 shirt off, air blowing ribs. Yes, I'm sure some does. other very smart gal would have been. But what? But Maybe. her. <sighs> really, Ian? Yeah. This girl? He, I mean, he couldn't get Laura Dern's. Maybe this is the consolation. Right. Yes. I Went think from paleobotanist to Pleasant. paleontologist. Yeah. I think Sarah needs to stick with digging up things in the dirt. Mm -hmm. yeah. she, she's probably better at that. She's, she probably eats the dirt as she does. She I know, fails I, this, at every turn. Th this is the one thing about the Jurassic Park movies that drive me freaking nuts. Mm. These are people who are used to studying fossils, not the living organisms. And all of a sudden, they're like experts on their behavior well, yeah. and on but their she's diet. That she's not. Right. Right. Yeah. She, but she's I'm saying you're proving your point. One. But right. she knows it. She just doesn't act upon it. Right. That's true. They get they they pull the thing into the RV, and I do love Ian Malcolm's reaction when they bring in the no 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Dump it over the ravine. <laughs> like, Let even, it go. No, and they set it on the table in the RV, and like oh, we just need to set the bone. No problem. We've done this a hundred times before, right? I've assembled dinosaur bones. That's what I do. So you got an ultrasound in the RV. Why you're just going to take pictures in this island? Fine, uh, Kelly. The only smart person in the whole is like, I don't, uh, this is dangerous. I can't be here. I don't want to be here. Please get me out of here. So they take her over to Eddie, who has set up the high hide, big fall. And by the way, they're hiding <laughs> from the other in gen bad guys with a lantern up high. Yes. Super. Really. Come get us. Inconspicuous. <laughs> Come get us. We're not alone on this island. I think Trembo even says when they yeah. realized you bolt cuttered the lock that was on one of the cages. And I would have assumed at that moment it was one of the guys I was with. I don't right. think I would have assumed it was another group. Yeah, well, well maybe somebody Some within turned. your group was they sabotaged. Must, they must yeah. pay them pretty good to be that sure. To be that sure that yeah. it wasn't one of our own guys, right? Eddie's yeah. up in the in the high hide. Like, do you think the spotlights are too much? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when they hear, so now up in the high hide, it's, it's it, just to set the scene here, Sarah and Nick are in the RV doctoring a baby T-Rex and Ian and Kelly and Eddie are up in the high hide a good distance away from the RV. And at this point, while they're up in the high hide, we start to hear the very famous rumbling of the T-Rex from the first movie. And we see the trees. I thought this was an effective shot. Mm -hmm. we see the T-Rex. We see the trees moving. And everyone knows what that means. And so Ian repels down <laughs> from the high hide because they don't know how to answer a telephone. This thing is ringing off the hook. They don't care. Who could be calling? Only Please them. them. <laughs> That's it. That's the only person that could possibly be calling you. Take the call. No one has this number, I'm assuming. It's not, hello, I'd like to reach you while your car is extended. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to no, say no, no, you're you're but like, fine. But what else are you thinking? Like, that has to be Ian. Yeah. It's not Kelly yeah. or it's Eddie, yeah. right? That's it. Or it's, the, you know, it's the boat. Or it's the boat saying, we're here. We're here. <laughs> are you guys, we heard some T-Rex noises. You guys doing okay over there? Yeah. Pick up the phone. I think that's where, like, they could have made that work where the phone is set up like off the hook somehow or whatever. It gets bumped. It, but instead, like, I don't know why they choose this. The, Sarah and uh, whoever Vince Vaughn's character is. I Nick. His name. Nick. Yep. They just name. don't care in this entire movie. They're just like yeah. totally just don't whatever. care about the danger, nothing. Like they don't even realize the dinosaurs have teeth. They're like, oh, <laughs> they're, they're just gums. They're toothless. <laughs> Um, but honestly, if they were just recently created out of <laughs> pipettes, some many things would go wrong and they wouldn't be great at it. Like no, a high true. percentage would be just like, where am I? What color is the yes. ocean? I don't know who I am. <laughs> Mother, what? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't scripted. I made that up right no, now. I appreciate They've had that. four years to perfect their hunting. Right. You know, four and there's years. that natural instinct. Sure. Ian gets right, into the RV and he's every person ever that's would it kill you to pick up the phone you know yep. and she's like oh sorry we're fixing this baby t-rex and right at that point you see a car roll past the window yep. of the rv because mommy's very angry because yes, he says. Very that's what he said angry. that's right i forgot about that um 
they T Rex they're they're standing and behind them the T Rex lowers down and you see it in they're the window. The they're way, all looking yeah. the other way. Yeah. And you're like, oh crap, it's T Rex. And then another one comes in the other window and you're like, oh crap, there's t- it's mom and dad T Rex. We're being hunted. <laughs> <laughs> and they just stand there. Mm-hmm. And the baby is on the table moving around and making noise. And I'm like, they know the baby's in here. Throw you can't it out just, the door. We think just, <laughs> if we just freeze, they're going to, they can see the baby. Yep. It's there. You can't just, so they finally are like, they just want the baby. So we're going to just open the door. Like mom and dad are there to pick him up from the babysitters or something and just be like, here's the baby. Here. And my son, this is the thing Grant goes, they think it's just going to be cool if they just hand the baby back you to know the T-Rex. It's just dino daycare. And they're just going to be like, thanks for our baby. And they then didn't leave. apologize. Maybe that was the problem. Is that why? Yeah. I couldn't believe this. They open the door. They're like, hey, guys, sorry. Well, she's napping. You know, here. <laughs> Here she is. Today's here's the free. here's the diaper bag. You know. I was taking some. <laughs> I was taking some notes at that point. I just felt like ready, and I wrote, "Everything is stupid." <laughs> That's what I wrote. You are not wrong. That's it. And it gets dumber by the minute yep. through the next like That's ten it. minutes in particular. Like this scene is the dumbest scene, and it goes on for a very long yes. yeah. time. Well, and way Sarah too long. Is the like the one who actually gets out into the like rain yeah, with like, the baby dino? Get her, snatch her. She's right there. And get she's her. just sitting there, like, ha, ha, ha. like, no, no. Their teeth are bigger than your entire calf. Like, no, it's <laughs> no. not. No, no. They do. And my my son and I were both very confused because it seemed like for a second the thing we were joking about, like, oh, they're just going to be cool about it, is what happened because they have this moment of quiet. They seem to have left. They're in the trailer, and in Ian Malcolm's like. I try to warn it. I use plain English. I don't have an accent that I'm aware of. I, I, you know, I don't understand why no one ever listens to me. And then, boom! Now they, they're they're there and they start railing into the side of this RV and they flip the RV over, and it's violent, dude. Um, the RV is just rolling, and the, there's a. I, we said before. I don't know if we did say before. They're on a cliff face, like hundreds of feet above the rocks and ocean. Down Looks like below. a good parking spot. Right. Great place to park sure. the RV. Yes. Because it's n- pouring rain and Nothing super rolls. muddy. Wheels do not roll. Right. And how yeah. did they get there? They parked it there. They would have had to come through yeah. the forest. From through the forest. Which had no roads or lines yeah. of Yeah. And they go, This spot's good. Well, helicopters do <laughs> drop things off there, so there is that. But they were they showed them driving. Yeah. That's right? how she snuck in. Right. Yep. Oh, I want to go back just one second Please to when the baby it. was, was yes. crying. You had said it was a camel they recorded. I really thought it was an untrained guy on a VO mic. It, <laughs> if you listen to it, it's just like... Rah, rah. So it, it's real fun. <laughs> it's real fun to listen to. So I'm just inviting um, you. I'm going to go with your narrative. I feel like that's yeah. more of a fun way to picture it. Yeah. Some guy's going... Mm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a lot of feedback from people saying they think it's just an untrained guy. Tell them it was a baby camel. Tell, tell them it was a, that's what happened. There was no camel. Put it on Wikipedia. It's free. Spielberg, we know what happened. Maybe what really happened is it was somebody who smoked camels. There it is. Oh. There it is. <laughs> and it just screwed up. Just their, the little ones, vocal. the baby ones. Yeah. They... Uh, <laughs> They just start, like I said, the T-Rex nails the trailer. They start rolling over. And I, the guy's like, what the frick? We fixed your stupid baby. Why are you rolling our trailer? I thought we were cool. <laughs> <laughs> and they just keep rolling and rolling. And finally it stops in the back end of the area because it's flexible in the middle, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, Like those buses. Like those buses. Yeah. And so the back half of it is now hanging off of the cliff. And the top half of it is still on its wheels on the very muddy, rainy ground up above and at this point we now have yeah. more of the weight because of the fact that the hitch yeah. has to be over the cliff we now have more of the weight yeah <laughs> for it to hang straight the hitch has to right. be over like we've right. known about we've known for a long time from isaac newton <laughs> it should all go well but the, there is the magic hey, in the front there's magic there so. but hey <laughs> again we're not what was in the front the engines in the front so maybe that yeah, but all the humans are dangling in the back. That's fair. Right? And each of those humans is a couple hundred pounds, maybe. Well, not <laughs> not, not Julianne Moore, probably not. I mean, Vince Vaughn's 6'4", <laughs> probably 220. Yeah. You know, you know in, in, maybe in Malcolm's in, a buck 80. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Plus his bravado weighs Plus about his, 20 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> Plus he had all that 20. equipment, though, in the back, too. All the like, yeah. equipment, the computers, you know. everything and I, else. So. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. They're all dangling, uh, and the, the at the very bottom, this is important, 
at the very bottom, you can see the ocean, but it's a, just a big window. So like, yeah. I said earlier, this thing was heavily armored. <laughs> Even the little like shitter window has yes. got bars over it. Yeah. But the giant... Apparently, the same thing as what you have in your house, except yeah. even that is double paned. Yeah, is how we're going to protect the ass end of this thing. Yeah. So the, when we have to run away from dinosaurs, <laughs> we're going to give them a giant opening for them to be able to just smash through and yeah. get us. But the views, there's, though. Well, there's a there is a piece on the back that that fell off. off. Yeah, was there? Yeah, yeah, because it was all enclosed in the back. Because as soon as it glass fell off, just cliff. there. So some number two Phillips up. heads. Were yeah, all they use. Well, they to use some, this thing. They use their plugs that Boeing on. uses Ace in their hardware. airplanes on that back. Because yeah. Nicole, I thought of you immediately when this <gasps> happened. Sarah slips and <laughs> freaking nails this glass. Should be dead. So, <laughs> <laughs> so hard. Fapooj. Yep. Oh my yep. gosh, it was seemed brutal. Yeah, it was an effective scene though. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. exactly. Like I know how stupid it is, but, but like, I kind of held my breath for her. She's holding yes. on the glass, and the glass under her hands is cracking. Yes, like. And she keeps trying to she keeps trying to get up, and they keep telling her stop moving. Yeah, and she's like, I don't listen to anybody. <laughs> no, I don't even listen to myself because uh, she does that all the time. That's why they tell you if you're like on a lake that's yeah. frozen, and my you start degree to hear was crack, from the internet. Get low <laughs> and flat, spread <laughs> yep. your weight out. Yeah. yeah, she's a scientist. She has a PhD. She's like, no, I'm gonna, I'm nope. gonna do a diamond push up and put both yeah. of my hands. <laughs> Pretty together. much. Let's put as much pressure on one little spot yep. of cracking glass as oh. we oh. possibly can. It, it, it was a, like it's Spielberg, so it still was a tense scene, and the the, the cracking glass, whether or not it. It's plausible was tense. In and, summary, Shorty yeah. did not get low. No, she didn't. I mean, the people with wrinkled brains, though, they had to be yes. angry right. about what was going on here. <laughs> I think they do. Um, a, the glass does break when a piece of equipment that Nick is trying to get to, but he can't the falls phone. Yeah. the phone. Yeah, and he and she grabs her backpack, which is held by Ian. So now. I, Ian is hanging onto the backpack, which Sarah is hanging on to. He's like, "Oh, you're lucky pack." So she's uh-huh. not. So here's uh-huh. another thing that really drives me nuts about movies all the time. Anytime yeah. somebody is dangling, suddenly has the upper body strength oh. of the most insane like American Ninja yeah. Warrior. Absolutely, right? the grip strength. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah. shoulder strength to pull yeah. stuff up. You know, the average. It was funny because unper. Un, you know, apropos of nothing, this had nothing to do with this movie at all, but I was just talking to Grace at dinner last night, and she was talking about how she was able to do four pull-ups, oh. and she was just like amazed by that, because she's been working out and stuff, and she goes, you know, like not, something like 90% of women can't do one. Yep. It's like what she'd read about. Yep. And I believe so it. now you've got that piece of information in my brain from yesterday, and here is Julianne Moore going, oh, I got oh, it. let's go, I got it. Yep. Yeah. And then people being able to pull other human beings up. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I don't care if it's a hundred pounds of trying to pull up against Bye, again into gravity. The ocean. Well, you got one arm up and the other arm like no. yes. You go, we go from <laughs> back draft, right? Like no, that guy's got all that equipment on too. There's no way you guys There's are no dangling. Way. Or just show me that they use their foot in the side for a second or and you're something, right. anything, something else. But really, she should already be a corpse from when she hit the glass yep. in the first. Place. Confirmed. Yeah, she hit that like a bird hits my front window, man. <laughs> same, same At noise least too. day. Do you know? Yeah. Eddie's worthless old Eddie shows up in his Jeep. Now, he having left his daughter alone in the high hide. Yeah, but the high well, hide. Yeah, but how's it that? Was the question I have how's that thing dangling there still? It was attached to the winch of the Jeep. Yeah, so he tied it off around the neck of another dinosaur he or must something? Have, yes. And just it. drove yeah. it back over there. Mm-hmm. Right? This one doesn't move that much. It's a slow one. And he just tied <laughs> it, it just around. It just looks up and goes, hey. <laughs> That's right. Drives the but, Jeep in. Well, you know, it. it, it, it I, I, I don't even know where to start with Eddie in this scene. But look, there he first he goes into the RV, and they're all super casual about the rope. We'd like a rope and cheeseburgers and french fries. I'm like, you're dangling off of a cliff. Okay? Fine. I will take down a floss. Anything you have. Super cash. So he ties it off, ties the rope off on a stump, and throws it down. And now commence the portion of the scene where Eddie is useless and can't do anything correctly. The RV starts to roll, the part that's on the ground starts to roll towards the cliff. Eddie stares at it, falls down, then tries to hook his Jeep's winch to it, falls down two more times, has to retie the rope, falls down again. (laughs) 
Okay. It's muddy and slippery. It's raining, right? It's wet. It. I know it's raining and muddy. I'm like, come on, man, get your crap together, dude. There's people are dangling off this cliff for the lives. He's fourth getting, quarter nerves. I feel like he did you. the winch three times in the rope, yep. two different times, yep. and he just keeps running back and forth and falling down. But like, is that his specialty? Is he a, a wincher? Like, He's got to be doing. I mean, this is where you're just you're a human trying to save people, <laughs> and you better be a wincher expert you know, or yeah. a rope tire guy yeah. because <laughs> none of this. Is, meanwhile, they're all just in the RV going, uh, I, soon I think we Help. should be able to... <laughs> dangling you know, by this rope, right? Now they're on a oh. rope. Yeah. And they're trying it to climb. somehow, <laughs> miraculously, is directly in the middle <laughs> of this thing that's dangling off when it right. should be laying yeah. flat against the side. Right, right, right. No. They should have all died. Movie over. Right. Let's go on with our You're lives. Right, because Thank it, you. The, the rope would at least be touching the RV when it comes Correct. over the, the yes. crest of it, yep. right? You would yep. think. Um, Everybody's eventually. shoulders would have given out before he could have gotten the winch set up anyway. And yes. just, you would have heard splat, splat, splat. Oh, I think that was them. Yeah, all right. All right well. Popping up their shoulders the and then the splat, yeah. splat, splat. Yeah, you're right. Like, Snap, crackle, then pop. Ew. Yeah, right. it's a Rice Krispies That's commercial right. over here. Eventually, he gets into the Jeep and floors it in reverse in that mud, is able to get traction somehow to yep. start pulling yep. this entire thing. There's no yeah. way. I you know German know. engineering is good and all of that, because what was this, a Mercedes? It's but a Mercedes, there's yeah. no way. <laughs> this thing is sliding side to side, yeah. too. It's not even going backwards. Right. And he should have gone to his death, too. Kill them all. There's, yeah, there's no way. <laughs> what is going on here? Like, why <laughs> do they get to just turn off physics? Like, hey, uh, we're going to doctor biology uh, a bit and that. shut off <laughs> physics all together. Once yeah. you're a scientist, you're all the sciences. You're all of them. <laughs> okay. It would have been more Believable if that was like an F three fifty with a power stroke <laughs> diesel in it trying to right, pull it back, right. not some little Mercedes <laughs> convertible Jeep. Yes, yeah. but I still would have yes. preferred them to have like a Mack truck pulling this thing backwards. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Or and, and in the midst of all this, you get an excellent kind of playoff of the last movie where he said where Jeff Goldblum is trying to climb behind Sarah goes, increase your rate of climb. Yes. Right, which yeah. is the must go faster, yes. you know, for the lost world. Um, that's kind of thrown in the middle of this. In the while Eddie's flooring this thing in reverse, the Rexes come back, right? They were they were walking away and they looked to like I feel like we could have done more. Don't you feel like we could have done more? Let's go back and push them off. They got got their new babysitter, right? right? Should we go back? You know what? I don't think that went over the cliff. Let's go back and make sure it went over the cliff. I don't think they did get the babysitter, and that means that she was wrong. They aren't that caring. They're just bloodthirsty (laughs) because they left their broken baby out in the middle of the woods twice to come back. (laughs) And then they go back, and then they start to rip apart the top of his Jeep, and they're like, he's distracted. Like, he stops pulling them because these T-Rexes are... I'm like, dude, you're useless focus on saving these people do something about the t-rexes eddie and say he just sits there wait like well he did try and pull his gun he tried to pull his drink gun you're saying (laughs) hold on time out (laughs) all y'all shut up all right (laughs) you're telling me you're telling me that you have a problem with the fact that two Tyrannosaurus Rexes yeah. are eating your car, and yeah. you stop for two seconds to assess the situation? He didn't stop for two seconds to assess the situation. He stopped pulling on the people that are going to die, and then didn't do anything about the T-Rexes to get rid of them either. He grabs the gun. He's tr- he's yeah, but he couldn't get it out of the net. He's like, son of a it's bitch! Stuck. You take the little piece, and you go even, over, the, over the, the sight, the iron sight. Even as he's getting pulled out of there from the T-Rexes, yeah. he is laying down because they grab his seat and rip it out. Right, and he is on laying floor. on the floor, foot still on the pedal, trying to get them out. Right, but he doesn't know where he's going. So He it, literally died oh. trying to save them. I, yep, I, I have like, had enough of this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no. Second it, because I've been sitting here going, I, I get that bad. Yeah, like, I get what you're saying about physics, whatever, but there, I, what everyone always tells us, there is a level of disbelief that you have he, to suspend. If Eddie hadn't fallen down. I suspended it when the freaking dinosaurs showed <laughs> Thank up. You. No, you didn't, the because you're complaining about the rope. If so there can be listen, dinosaurs. No, I'm talking about in the entire aspect of this universe <laughs> where there's dinosaurs brought back to yes. life with frog DNA. Sure. I've suspended that. Okay. If Eddie hadn't fallen down 16 times, they would have all been out of there having a, <laughs> having breakfast at the campfire before the T-Rex has got back. All right, back. James. The we're going to set reason. up a same situation. You're going to run with the yeah. winch and try the to do is, that. Just <laughs> don't move. You still hit the gas and you freeze. And they don't know you're in there because they're T-Rexes. I think that's a good Patreon addition and we should do it. The problem yeah. is is that they just like pushing cars over ledges. Remember, the T-Rex just stepped through yes. in the first movie. He yes. came right up onto the road. And then when he pushed... The car, it went into a tree. That's true. Yeah. True. Yeah. When it should have been flat ground there. Well, maybe it's the other side. 
All right. Anyway, rest, rest in peace, Eddie. Eddie gets eaten and torn yeah. in half, and that was sad, I he guess. Worked hard. You don't care. People that cared about it. I wonder what their digestive. <laughs> like, do you find like the clothing and dino shit after somebody I gets eaten? Like, belt like boot laces. Yeah. yeah. Just a dino turd with a belt around yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, sure. Because I can't digest the belts. Like when dogs eat a rubber band, you can like pick the shit up by the rubber yeah, band. Like exactly. Is it belt, you can just pick up the turd. Yeah, then there you go. Yeah, you just take it with them. Just go uh, your own. The truck, the RV ends up slipping all the way and falls off the cliff, and they just stay on the rope, dead, se- dead center in the middle as the entire thing falls th- around them, and they go through the windshield like the steering wheels not grabbing one of them by the foot and yep. taking them or the out. friction or of the- all of that going along the rope doesn't yes. fray it and take them on down. There's something Nothing. random. Like the thing you don't yeah. expect, like the, I don't know, the, what's the sonography you know, machine? The sonography machine or one of the cabinet doors was open. Yep. You know what yeah, I mean? Like I can't stand head. up without smacking my head on a cabinet door that's open. Yep. And when that thing popped up like this, it should have ripped the rope up with the yep. Jeep and come right back yeah. down with no, it. No, you're right. That's it. It's ridiculous. RIP, movie over. They that's climb it. up the rope and they're helped by Engine, who suddenly there's 40 guys up there. And if they'd been there two minutes earlier, maybe Eddie could have gotten all them killed too. <sighs> And why wouldn't so. the T-Rex go after them? <laughs> if you're protecting yeah. your baby and there's I, an I, I army of people coming. I know. T-Rex is just That's gone. throughout this entire movie, though. That people show up even later with the waterfall. Yeah. Like, he That's shows true. up two seconds after the T-Rex. Where the T-Rex go. Yep. All right. InGen is like, all right, because you a-holes ruined our giant, huge, awesome satellite. We now have to get to the old communication center to use their radios because you guys are idiots and ruined our camp. Why help them up off, off the rope? Why not just let them die? Why not just cut the rope? Like, yeah. Meh. I didn't get the sense that they were murderers. I think they were competitors. Maybe they thought there was use for them. Ideal, idealistically different from each other, mm-hmm. right? Perhaps but, they were bait for later. Yeah, but I did knows? wonder why. Like, yeah. Also. No, that's, I'm just saying, yeah. you you got to be paying these guys quite a bit of money. They're very skilled weapons, right? Mm-hmm. They're probably mercenaries. They yeah. probably kill people. Well, the one likes to zap dinos in the face for no reason, and that's like a first sign of being a psychopath is torturing animals, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? specifically dinosaurs. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking if there had been a kangaroo there, he would have zapped that thing yeah. in the face, no, that's too. that's what I, I thought know. right away. I would have punched him square in the face if he messed with a kangaroo. <laughs> so, Better the kangaroo would have messed him up. Have you ever seen those things by yeah. yeah, bro, and they're... They're, Jack, those things yeah, are, they're dangerous. are jacked, yeah. Uh, all right, so we need to get the old communication center. By the way, totally not a big deal, but this is where the Raptors live. Just want to let you guys know that's where we got to go. And like, oh, of course, because it's the last half hour of the movie, and that's the part where the Raptors come out, just like in Jurassic Park, yep. in the last 30 minutes of the movie. Uh, they set out on this expedition through the woods to get to this old communication center, and they eventually stop for a break. And this is where Peter Stamari's character uh, and his buddy go off for a tinkle. And they take the opportunity while he's out tinkling <laughs> to tase another dinosaur in the face. And his whole crew rolls up on Peter like, what's up? Yeah, the little compy uh, dinosaurs, the little lizard thing yeah. in the beginning, they all show up and they're attacking him. They right. start attacking him. They start attacking him because he tased this guy again. And he's getting, he gets chased across the entire jungle. I felt like he ended up on the, halfway across the island right. by the time these things he took him down. He or his stunt double gets 50 extra points for me because he oh, yeah. committed to that fall down the ravine. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. And then that last shot of him face hitting the yep. dirt was was Peter. And that was awesome. Yeah. Awesome. For he sure. had dirt like up his nose in that scene. Yeah. No, it was, it was like, great. Ugh. And dude that went with him doesn't even know he's gone. Well, he's he was like sitting on, on his the headphones. outskirts of where everyone was. Right. And so he was just chilling with his music. Right. He didn't know he went. Yeah. yeah. I thought he told him he was he going. Told oh, him, right. He told him, but then it shows he didn't he's got his, Oh, that's right. He didn't hear him because of the headphones. He's he was listening to Christina Aguilera. <laughs> I'm a genie I think Christina Aguilera was still on the Mickey Mouse Club when this movie came yeah. out. <laughs> this was close. 97 was, I think, oh, I think 97 was maybe the year that happened. Yeah, it might yeah. have been maybe some Robert yeah. Palmer. Or some Wilson Phillips. Um, <laughs> hold on for one more day. I know that there's chain, but you hold on for one more day. And you break free from the chain. I think I came to the wrong I podcast. I gotta go. Man, <laughs> this the, is what they're the paying scene for. Come and Harold on, and Kumar Dino when they sing that is fantastic. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Someday somebody's gonna make you wanna turn around and say goodbye. I could not. Do that part. All right. I can't stop it. So there's a part, I don't know when, but the daughter says, carry me to her dad. And And I would have. And that's when she gets punted off the edge of the island. (laughs) If it's done properly. Right. Because he was was limping. 
She's you're also not, not endurance. You're not going to put you on the pommel horse or the rings with that kind of like, attitude. She's not young enough to be asking him to carry yeah. her. Like right. she's you got to play through. Got to be like twelve. Yeah, you got to rub some there's dirt no on way. it. Get back out on the field. No, there's no way. He's limping. Carry me. Number of times I saw two defensive ends yeah. in front of me because I had already been concussed and right. I was just like, no, I can't let my coach know. I don't. I don't watch <laughs> volleyball. So they do eventually realize that <laughs> Peter starmary has gone, and then they go to check for him. They're like, we found what was. The parts they didn't like, <laughs> basically, right. you know, he does get eaten and killed by these guys. Uh, they end up setting up camp for the night, and Ian is just walking through the camp. Hold on a second. Yes. Let's not forget Julianne Moore. Yes. With the T Rex baby oh, blood on her. It. That she's oh. yeah. Oh, we're getting to it. Yeah. I thought that came well before they, they set up camp. They, before they set up camp, she talks about it, but this is where we well because we the see the one thing where like the blood yes. wipes off on a tree on a tree leaf, and yes. then somebody's like, "Hey, what's going on?" She's like, "Oh, don't worry, it's not mine. It's just the T Rex. It's just the T Rex's baby." And blood. nobody's like, "Oh, you know what? That should go away right how, now." How about this, Patrick? I'll do you one better because <laughs> the fact that she at each step, which is the uh, observe, don't touch, broke yep. that rule. Yep, don't bring the baby, broke that rule. Uh, and then, doesn't she also lecture somebody very condescendingly about how T Rexes have great sense of smell because they're the largest exactly. olfactory? Yes, it happens right out after of this, I believe. Right? And yes. she's like, so, but like in their face, and then proceeds to carry this baby's blood after having lectured somebody yep. about how great they smell and hangs it up in her tent. Yep. And everybody heard her say it. Yes. And even when it's like, oh, that's the baby T Rex blood, nobody stops. She never listens to anything she says. Even it's for everybody else but her. Yeah. Sounds like ADHD. even so. Not only does she hang the bloody vest up, yeah, she has snacks in her tent. Yeah, you go just camping in like of crackle s'mores bars everywhere. Yeah. You go camping out in California where there's yeah. grizzlies and whatever. Yeah, you're not keeping snacks in your dude. Tent. You no. go camping in Wisconsin and you don't put that right. in there, dude. Like, yeah, you go that's up, true. If you go up to like the UP, you see these poles and people are like, yep. Whoa, "What are those poles?" It's that's where you hang your food so the bears don't eat you. They got right. big lock boxes for it. Man. She ha- I'm gonna take my chances against a black bear in northern Wisconsin <laughs> and or the UP versus a T Rex, and yes. I'm still gonna hang my food up. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. She's got all these like how many crackle bars did she eat? She had the freaking wrapper. And who's like, using uh, crackle bars? Oh, crackle bars are good. Don't not start hating on s'mores. crackle bars. Even even in the car in the in the RV way yeah. before when when he comes in he's like oh this looks like your room uh, yeah. Ian says that to his daughter yeah and there are about ninety seven wrappers like That's how saying, much is dude. this kid eating right and there's seventeen banana peels I'm right. gonna I'll just say it right now gymnastics man yeah. crackle bars are better than crunch bars same thing basically but I like yeah, the crackle bar better who does that on a, on a s'more I, I, were they using them for s'mores? Who I thought she was, was just. Ma- I thought there Mongean. were some graham crackers there, there too. I think did there were some graham crackers. Or and, and, were and, and that's what I noticed. There were graham cracker like pieces yeah. oh. all around. Have you ever used a crunch bar for a s'more? Because I kind of want to try it now. No. Maybe right. it'll snap. Reese's crackle, peanut, peanut, butter peanut, peanut, Reese's peanut butter cups. Reese's peanut butter cups. ASMR. See, my head's not so smooth. Reese's peanut butter cups are fire and s'mores. It's still pretty smooth. There's one wrinkle left in that brain. We do that all the time. Try that instead of a Hershey bar. Right yeah. Hershey bars don't melt properly in the yeah. same time as the other stuff. Exactly. Yeah. That's why you got to go with the, with the other one. All right. Let's talk about dinosaurs. All right. So anyway. Right, what? So what? <laughs> Where are we? The puddles start rumbling in camp, and Ian's walking around, and he notices. It's about time some water yes. rumbles in and, the movie. Yeah. That's and why we're here. <laughs> yes. It's Jurassic Park. Water. Uh, water needs to move. Then we see her hanging out with her bloody shirt in her tent, and as she hears the rumbling, and this is when she looks up at the shirt, goes, oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, problem. <laughs> I wonder That's when if you heat it out of the that. tent. <laughs> and yeah. let me get the right. food out of my tent, too. Can I say no, put it under your no, sleep. Wrap it up and put it under your pillow. And you see the T-Rex like silhouette come right down next to the freaking tent. And then it sticks its face in the tent. I'm like, it's either this shirt or it's all these crackle bars that she's hiding under her sleeping bag, right? Like, it, well, it wants one or the other things. It's probably the baby's blood that attracted it here. But maybe it's just hungry. It sneaks in like... What's up? You got some. You got some crackle and bars it in here. And waits a while and thinks about it. Y'all making s'mores? Because that's what it would do: is wait a while right. and think about it. Y'all there, making s'mores in here? Yeah. The, the T Rex. <laughs> y'all got extra. <laughs> so it knows its baby's fine. So it knows that it's just tracking whatever it's trying to kill, right? Yes. Because of the blood, it's gonna just eat the tent. It's right. just gonna bite into yep. it. Yep. They're it's just gonna dead. stick his whole head, and the tent doesn't collapse. Like you think, I the tent falls down when I get into it. You think like this T-Rex head's going to get all the way in and the tent's just going to be like, well, it's built for four people and there's only two in here. To so. be fair, the T-Rex does a lot of cardio. <laughs> right. And then, then Kelly wakes up like, huh? 
Lord, could you imagine waking up from a dead sleep and there's just the T-Rex head right above you and you're just Heart like, attack, you're dead. <laughs> Pee everywhere. Pee everywhere. There's no way that you're going to shush someone from that and be like, no. shh, just don't make a sound. Like, no. She's like, <gasps> and it starts crying. I'm like, nah, dude, you already would have screamed. There's yeah. no, there's no way. But Walkman guy does it for him. Walkman guy is back out, you know. <laughs> Carlos. Carlos. He starts screaming, and this is when the tent gets ripped up because you know he's like, "Oh my god!" And Ian is, yelling, "Don't move! Don't run! No, nobody ever listens." This whole movie, the theme of the movie is no one listens to Ian. No. Well, what, what do they always say? You know, every disaster movie starts with people ignoring the scientists at the beginning, saying, right. "Hey, there's something coming." Yeah, right. I don't think she even ate any of the crackle bar or anything. It was just pieces of it. Just crumbled it. <laughs> just, just all put right, this good here. night. Just put this here. That's right? what yeah. I do. Here's the thing the, with the "don't move, don't run" thing. Were none of these guys briefed before they got to this island about what to do with certain scenarios? Like, no one told them about the T-Rex thing. It did seem like a pretty I mean, quick departure. But to some yeah. extent, it's fight, flight, or freeze, you know? Yeah. like And just instinct kicks in no matter what you've been taught. Yeah, but these guys are running. The shot actually ended up being unintentionally hilarious because yes. they're running away with machine guns in the hair like Kermit. Like Kermit you know, the like, Frog, yeah, I was just like, uh. I'm like, these things aren't bulletproof. Like, if you're really scared... Kill the thing. I mean, I know they're not supposed to, but like in your point, fight or fight, the fight yeah. part, you've got a machine gun, an auto assault right. rifle in your hand, and they're screaming and running for the There's hills. A lot of trauma it's, going on. Yeah. yeah. It, it feels like Yakety Sack should have been playing and like the dinosaurs <laughs> going back and forth. Like the people are going back and forth across the screen. The dinosaur pops up. Oh, I need to re edit. Like, There's a point where they the, they're face to face. Yeah. You know, and then like he's like, oh no, and then it turns around. Yes. <laughs> I feel like. Uh, <laughs> It probably would be difficult to take down a T-Rex with a machine gun, though, because... Well, but enough of them, they have, like, six machine guns, just yeah, those guys. Yeah, if you get enough people, it probably would happen, yeah. but it's just... It's like a grizzly bear, right? Like, if you shoot a grizzly bear in the head, yeah. it's not, you're not killing it. Every Pete, movie teaches you, you shoot him in the mouth. Pete is the <laughs> only one, or a Great Outdoors, you shoot him uh, across their hair, across and you dome. shave the hair off their sure. ass. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's the yeah. Only way you right. do it, right? But getting <laughs> shot with a BB gun isn't going to kill you, but it's still going to make you go, hey, maybe Angry. I should figure something else yeah. out. Right. right. That's yeah. when you get John Candy in the scene. Big T-Rex. Big T-Rex. Chase me. <laughs> <laughs> be awesome. Um, all right, Pete. Pete Postlewaite's character, Trembo, is the only one who grabs a tranquilizer gun and puts one of the T-Rexes down. Yep. Right? He's the only one that everyone's screaming. He's like... <sighs> well, he tries to shoot it, the buck, with his shotgun because yeah. he's got a double barrel shotgun. Yeah. And Vince Vaughn, he left his shotgun by Vince Vaughn earlier. Right. Oh, thank you. Yes. And Vince Vaughn took the bullets out. We don't see that part, but right. we find out later. Find out later he did. Yeah. yeah. So, like, but here's the problem. He's this like world famous hunter apparently who's yeah. hunted everything. He only brings two bullets. Yeah, like, where, are the, where are the rest of your shells, dude? This bro would have them like in his underwear. Right. He was gonna you, always you have bullets on so. him. That's what you would I think do. So that's what I yeah. seriously right now I'm sitting on like. But then he went to <laughs> four pounds of lead. Ultimately, right, right now. <laughs> Perfect. So if anybody, if a T-Rex snicks his head in the air, like... He's not going to make you it. You guys got tasty cakes in here? Yeah. It's like, no, nah, man. No, nah, we're good. All right. So the other T-Rex that didn't get tranked uh, chases four of them into a waterfall. One of them was Mox's dad, the yep. cowboy guy. Yep. And then Sarah and Nick and Kelly. Yep. Ian is not with them yet. This is important. Uh, chases them into a waterfall, and there's just enough room behind the waterfall to have their backs against the rocks. The T-Rex's head comes through the waterfall into the Cave and can just barely not reach them, just to paint the picture here, right? Because of the water. Because of right. well, or the head doesn't fit any further uh, in. Well, it's like, you know what I mean? His head's it's like a cave. in. So his head's in. His head is. And it's not like they have broad shoulders. What's yeah. stopping the head from coming in further? Just a little Nothing. bit of tongue, just. Bleh. But within that was a lot of bit of tongue. The thing <laughs> that was very erratic. Sticks its tongue in. Serious, I didn't mean yeah. that. I was. Fun. I thought it was. I was like, please lick Sarah's face because I just it's like. <laughs> She deserves it. Yeah. Like if anybody deserves you think it'd the gross rough, like a cat's tongue. I think exactly what it would. It just like. rip her skin right off. They, T Rexes bathe themselves, don't <laughs> yeah, they? Isn't yeah, that they, what they do. That's yeah, I, yeah. They from can't what get their I've arms seen, up there. I want to see a T Rex trying to lick itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're the most well groomed dinosaurs. They have movies alone. like that. They have very dirty. Sure. Wait, that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> but the point of this scene, and I'm only setting this up in a very specific way because of what ridiculous thing happens here. But it's can't quite reach them. They're very close, close enough to lick them with its tongue, but not to get them with. Its teeth. Now, at this moment, Mox's dad has a snake crawl off of the rocks and down his shirt, and this man goes, "Oh, snake!" and then dives into the T Rex's mouth. This guy was a doctor. 
He was a doctor, and I assume of like a wildlife specialist, and that yes. was a non-venomous snake that crawled onto him. Uh, that's what I'm saying. And even if it is a venomous snake, like there's a chance it won't bite you. Maybe diving in, uh, and he dives forward. There's a T-Rex. An inch away yeah. from your face. There's been a lot of DNA swapping on that island, so you <laughs> never know, right? <laughs> this the the nose dive into the T Rex is one of the all time. And I just imagined as he's getting carried away, he also gets bitten by the snake anyway, Perfect. right? Yes. Like while it's happening. Yep. Because this is this was the, one of the funniest things that happened in the entire movie. Meanwhile, some guy who early, early, early on has fallen off of a jeep is just waking up and going, guys. <laughs> yeah. Guys. What happened? <laughs> Where'd you guys go? <laughs> oh, crap. They're all gone. Well. Uh, Malcolm then comes through the water, and they, they shoot it to make it think the T-Rex is back, but it's just Malcolm coming through the waterfall. And like you said before, where's the T-Rex? Malcolm, two seconds. Two seconds ago, there was a Rex there. Now Malcolm's just like, what's up, guys? Are we going to keep going? <laughs> uh, the, and meanwhile, the InGen guys are running into this area with this very long, like, human-tall grass. This is the dumbest scene. Yep. And the raptors yep. are like... Mm, how nice of you to join us right. here in our grassy field where we all Trumbo's live. like second in command guy. Yeah. Like not his second in command, but his hunting buddy. Yeah, his mm-hmm. hunting buddy. Is running into the grass full speed going, don't run in the grass. Don't go in the grass. Don't. <laughs> and he keeps going. He just keeps running in the grass. Like, what are you doing? Stand at the edge of the grass yep. and shout your instructions. Yep. It's like Bambi, like, don't go in the meadow. Like, <laughs> right. yeah. what are we doing? It's terrible. It's such a case of the unimportant characters get picked off, but like yes. just so happens that <laughs> Julian Moore, who's obviously a track runner, is fine. Like, no, they're all fine. <sighs> they all make it through. So the trails, you start, and the shot is cool. The it's a cool shot. Is it is. You see all these trails start to come in behind them, and all of these raptors are closing ranks on this. And this is where you see Spielberg flex his jaws muscles yes, exactly. a little bit. And they all start disappearing yeah. under the grass. That is cool. You know, and it, I'm like, I like that. I like that little callback to jaws. It's there. fun. It, I will say it's it's stupid as, like... Yeah. If you really break it down, like the yeah. RV scene is like effective to watch. It's fun as the audience, but it's right. also dumb if you break it down. This For is the sure. same thing where it's it's yeah. fun to watch. It's cool. Right. And the one raptor jumps out, which yes. is pretty sweet. He springs out like he's on a trampoline. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Those things can leap, man. How did they get him on a trampoline? It can leap like, look at the bones. <laughs> they built the trampolines because they're so sharp, advanced. Flighty things. <laughs> right. What that? else do they have to do? There's no other That's hobbies right. on the island. You they build literally trampolines. play around in that tall grass all day and humans finally showed up. Finally. Maybe he died while he was writing it. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't just carve out. Ah, he would just say it. <laughs> um, all right. So, but you're right, Nicole. The main crew of Kelly, Ian, Sarah, and Nick make it through the long grass, no problem. Sure. And down into some animal's rib cage that's been dead for a long time. Yeah. It helps. Uh, uh, right, plot there, armor. Yeah. right there. Right yeah. there. I walk up on a bunch of dino bones that are fresh. Yeah. I'm like, we probably shouldn't be here. Bye. Why don't we go somewhere else? And those, this is where Nick, like you said before, fresh? Nick. There's meat on them still. Uh, Nick. And Sarah both act like there's no problem and these dinosaurs don't have teeth because this is where Nick's like, can't wait for a second. Every second counts. I'm just going to go by myself to the communication center and you guys can catch up to me whenever. And I'm just goes off like, like, yep, let's split up. This is great. But then it never bites him. Like he goes there, gets inside the communication center, fires up the radio and calls in the choppers. Nothing ever happens. No one's there to make dumb decisions around. (laughs) There should have been a scene where he had to fight some raptors or something. Something. You would think there should be some raptors hanging out there. Right. Hand to hand combat. But what happens when the other three finally get to the communication center and they walk into like the courtyard of the place or whatever, the raptors are like, oh, I'm sorry. We only allow one person in here at a time. (laughs) You know, one one person gets in free. We actually have a dress code here, sir. (laughs) I'm sorry. He's already using the radio. You got to keep out. And uh, uh, now there's 20 raptors. Mm -hmm. You know, when Nick was just there and there was nothing. How did any of this stuff still work? They they cover that. It's geo-powered. It's a geothermal power plant that was never intended to have to be recharged. But I don't mean even from that standpoint. I mean from the standpoint, down. yeah, the breakdown of the corrosion. I mean, you're in it's a tropical environment. There's four years. There's plants but growing they're... out of it. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. That's like the button key. Like the kiosk has plants growing out yeah, of it. It's the, literally like yeah. if you went to Rainforest Cafe and you have all everything covering it, right? Yeah. Right. Same thing. I feel like it 
probably wouldn't have been that overgrown inside because like but it was it would have been a better movie <laughs> inside the building inside was the all broken cafe. down and oh. the glass was broken everything why else. hasn't rainforest cafe been a movie i yet? think they're well the chicago one closed down it, okay but they still are a company i think because i think there's still some yeah there's still right. some around okay so yeah. we could Jurassic rainforest Park cafe 29 the movie, or wherever we are where the animatronics come alive inside of a rainforest cafe do i have to write everything for hollywood right. this is so, I'm, so print, print there the money. is there right? is in an episode of parks and rec nice where they go to a place i believe it's called jurassic fork oh yeah. is the name <laughs> of the place that they go to i love it because they're trying to cheer up tom because uh because ron's dating his hot oh, green God. card wife now and he's all bummed <laughs> Uh, I remember that. The first that episode. The, <laughs> not, I'd love to talk about Parks and Rec, but just to get to the finish line, uh, a raptor leaps on Sarah's back and starts to chew at her back. I'm telling you, these dinos just want these crackle bars, guys. That's yep. all they're really interested in. They, they get just, her lucky pack. They, they get the lucky pack. The lucky, the lucky pack. And she's able to get out of that. This is where this is where the scene got slightly ridiculous to me. Eh, slightly is probably a statement. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this is where it, Ian's... Like half ass running and dodging of these raptors borderline f- comedy. Yep. Right? Yep. Instead of tense. He was scary. trying to, I, I get it. He was trying to act like he's hurt, right? But you it know. wasn't like a a real great effort at trying no. to maneuver when you're hurt. Right. And I jump in this window and then it jumps in the window. And so I come around, I close the door. And at no point did I ever get a sense from Jeff that he was like getting scared. attacked by a raptor. Yeah. Getting attacked by a raptor. He needed a flare. I think, I think you know. that um, <laughs> you hit it on the head. Where you were saying uh, the the animals didn't know what was going on because they're only like four years old, yeah. right? right? Like they had no training. Right. So these raptors aren't like the raptors from the the actual park that had training and they right. they taught them combat. These ones had never seen combat. So <laughs> right. They're just this like is, yeah. There's like a cat with a mouth and they catch it. And they're like, oh, what, what do we do, do with I it? Do? Yeah, right. let's just go with that. Right. I think <laughs> that's what it was. Right. <laughs> they, didn't to go, but I think the, they didn't go through basic raptor training. Right. The feral yeah, right. ones. <laughs> Are just going on the instinct to kill, whereas you would right. think training would take some of that. To make are you it serious less. about? They, you think they trained the raptors on the? No, other I island? don't think they okay. trained no, the raptors. He thinks I thought it was a, I thought it was a joke, island. and then the conversation kept going in a serious manner, <laughs> and I just wanted to check and make sure that they had we did classes they, that this with I joke about no, were, having a smooth brain doesn't yeah. mean I actually have a smooth James, brain, bro. The thing but, is, they weren't necessarily. It could have been more than four years old. When you think about the fact that they didn't just start bringing people down to that island to check it out, like they were ready to open Jurassic Park. So yeah. it would have been years of research before. These that. These would have been sure. older so guys. Sure. Yeah. Okay. It was a bit. Oh my God! This is a comedy these podcast. Could have been, no, these I'm just your... making sure because <laughs> you guys seemed you were you sold it better than Jeff Goldblum sold <laughs> running from these raptors. <laughs> that you fooled me. Apparently well, see, these, too well. And these I'm were like, your first generation like, raptors. They, think, they got yeah. much better as you got no, further did, in. Did he think Muldoon along, was running these like, guys he, through drills like he had yes, mannequin yes. dummies and Muldoon he was just give me twenty basic training going on where he was training the raptors on Jurassic. You know they could have done another spinoff about. About the the um, early on DNA work about the yes. creatures that weren't didn't really work out like yeah, Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy did. Yes, it'd be like a, a sitcom. And when, and when they did, the well raptor the- walks in and closes the door. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the day I had. Woo! <laughs> and the, when the raptor did really good on the drills, Muldoon would throw them crackle bars. That's yeah. why. Yes. They liked it that's why they're after that it. it. Yep. Yep. Got it. That's why they no, had a taste for it. Raptors are definitely. Not scary and lame mm-hmm. on a short bus. Like yeah. they are not smart. These raptors. are your smooth brained raptors. And yes. all we heard, all we heard about in the first movie is how smart they are. Yep. Yeah. How tactical they are, and they would kill people instantly. These right? ones were all named Ryan Madela. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> uh, and then Jeff, I like Jeff just hides inside a car, and one's trying to break through the window, and he, he just, just stares at it, like stuck in well, the window. Yeah, yeah and him breaking that raptor breaking the glass. He's like yeah. nuzzling through, yeah. and you're like, that's and not Jeff's how car like, windows well, break. Okay. Right. Uh, the girls, meanwhile, Sarah and Kelly barricade themselves in a shack and try to dig out the out under a wall on the other with side. With their hands. Y- yeah, here's As here's the, a problem yeah. I have with that. Not yes. that the whole scene was ridiculous, but I'm, I'll am tell you what. A raptor with claws like that is going to yeah. dig a hell of a lot faster oh. yep. than two human beings. Their hole was getting deeper way faster than yeah, the raptor was. hole was. Also, That's what she said. There are... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> no. They're all girls there, so she didn't say that. They're all <laughs> female dinosaurs. No, there's male dinosaurs. Is there? Yes, and there's actually, that's the thing, is they, they, they actually had some males on here. Males. So some of the, that's why the raptors, there were different colorings on it, because he oh. wanted to differentiate the male from the female I, raptors on the island. I, some my other problem is the fact that this is a tropical, I guess she did jungle-like that, but... island. 
And everyone's wearing seven layers. There's that. Because there's that. And the dirt is <laughs> just so, moving. It's like so it's dry. Dirt. It's oh. not. That why, dirt's it not going to be, like, be that yeah, dry. No. no. Yeah. Huh. You're right. It's ridiculous. So, also, when the raptor's digging, they show a big wall of wrenches. Yeah. Or like, or on the door actually. Tool. There's a bunch of huge wrenches, yeah. Um, like pipe wrenches. I'm yeah. like, grab a pipe wrench, and when the raptor sticks its head through, bash it in the skull. Yeah, there you go. You have a pile only of dead one raptors. at a time is coming through. And so, right. right. So we're. So you said earlier, bullet not killing <laughs> to a T Rex. This is a raptor. Wrench. Yeah, man. Okay. But maybe it makes them go. We should change up our. Yeah, plan. you think that you yeah, you hit a raptor in the head as hard solving. as you can with a pipe wrench. You don't think it's gonna be like. Well, they're problem care. solvers. So the first we'll one it. would get killed by a pipe wrench, and then the other it. raptors would be like, "That guy got killed by a pipe wrench. We're not doing that again." We're going into the top. We're gonna go through the top <laughs> somehow. Yeah, find another way. Uh, we'll find so a way because we're life. Life finds a way. Again, digging faster than the raptors, but when they go to go under their hole, one of them almost bites their head off because they came around the back. So the girls climb up into the th- like the third level of the raptors here. There's like a second level farmhouse. Yeah. The but raptor like, should have just grabbed her skull at that point. Yeah. Instead, it right. sticks its head in to be like, yo, what are you guys doing? Hey, y'all. I know you got some left in there. You got a you got party crackle bars in here? Did yeah. you guys want to buy some Girl Scout cookies? This was, this was the embodiment. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg's got just some there. Hey, you're a raptor. This What's that all about, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so how do you have a mother for me, okay? <laughs> oh, my <laughs> The Raptors of the Latter Day Saints. I'm in Jurassic Park. Oh I'm in Jurassic Park. You see that movie? Raptors. Just hey, I know you're in there. Answer the door. Would you like to talk to us about our Lord and Savior? That's right. Raptor. I was in the I was in the Big Hit. Did you see that movie? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. There's a whole part about the, there's the the cooking scene. Never That's mind. right. <sighs> yeah, uh, Ian. This is the this is the embodiment of him in this scene. I feel like perfectly, as this he's back in that car, and as that raptor is pushing its head through, he just casually gets out of the car and half jogs over to the building and goes in, and the other raptor just doesn't chase him. Yeah, it was he was really slow jogging. That's what I'm yeah. saying, dude. Uh, and he gets inside the shack where they the girls were, and they just immediately go, "Hey, up here, okay." And he climbs up to the second part, but then a raptor. I can't believe this happened mm-hmm. in this movie. The raptor also jumps up to the second level. So the girls are like another level up, like on the third level. Second level is a raptor and Ian. But the good thing is the pipe work in there was so strong. So strong yep. and yep. plentiful. There were just pipes and bars. Pipes. So going strong. Days. Not, not bars that were next to each other, but what do we call it when one's here and one's here? Uh, uh, but uneven, uneven parallel oh, bars. Uneven bars. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Uneven bars. Uneven. Hey, remember Jim Cotta when there was just a pummel horse right yeah. where he needed one to be at the precise moment he needed one to be there? Surprised there wasn't one in this place. <laughs> <laughs> well, they when you have multi- lo- multiple levels like they, there's no room for the pummel horse. This is almost as bad as we gave that movie Touché. such crap. This is almost as bad as Jim Cotta. She no, literally does an uneven bars routine to then kick a raptor, and she weighs 80 pounds, I'm guessing, yeah. out a window. And saving her father, and even like like lands with a. I just needed her to land and do the thing with the hand. Yeah, she should have. Nine point five. And yeah, the ra- other raptors were outside holding their cards up. Like I think one gave it like an eight, another like an eight point five. <laughs> and she's and I just wanted to be like, oh, good for you. Nice. Okay, this you're is, a gymnast. We get it. You know yeah. what happened? That would have been like. When the back car hits Superman in Batman versus Superman, <laughs> she would have hit that raptor skull. That would have been her going flying. Seriously. I think this is why she got kicked from the team. She kept kicking her teammates off. In the face. <laughs> in the face. Swing she around kicking and kicking the windows. And all you need to do is swing around the bar and get momentum kick. She did, like, the moves. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, she, I don't know what, what they're called. I'm not a, I'm not a gymnast. No, the moves work out I'm not great. a gymnastic scientist. I'm just, you know, she was doing, f- like, flares and flourishes. Yes, that's it. And then kicks the thing sure. out. I mean, she clearly floor routine wasn't her thing. Otherwise, she would have been doing cartwheels and backflips and all of that through the tall grass to get yeah. away from the Dad, raptors. Dad, play my routine song. Yeah. I would have loved it. Everybody dance now. She was, <laughs> she was more of an aerialist. <laughs> it would have been great if there was like a long stick with a ribbon on it and she started doing like the rhythm. What if her oh thing was gosh. rhythmic dancing? Yes, that Rhythm would have been fantastic. Dancer. Will Ferrell shows up all of a That's, sudden. I, need, I, needed her, yes. I needed her important skill that they laid the tracks for early to come back at just the right time, but have it be useless like she's a ribbon dancer yeah. or she's a figure skater and they're in the jungle yeah. or mm-hmm. something yep. but no they were uneven bars right where she happened to be positioned to save her father luckily we put it in this ice rink 
<laughs> that's what we, that's literally they would have chased Jeff if she had been a figure skater. If that's what they had said before, they would have chased Jeff Goldblum into a building where whatever the liquid nitrogen had frozen the ground, the flux capacitor the flux malfunctioned, and, whatever, and, and she would have you know fashioned skates out of her bamboo, lucky, raptor her claws, lucky <laughs> plantains, and skated in and saved her father. That's about the level at which this is at. Yep. Them. yep. All right. The escape was pretty funny at this point. Sarah, just to get to the end here, Sarah is trying to climb across the roof, but a oh, raptor is there. Like she makes it. Ceramic tiles, you know what I mean? I don't. And so she pulls the ceramic tiles, which makes the them all fall down, and the raptor falls into another raptor that's underneath Sarah on the ground. They get pissed at each other. Yo, bro, start, what are you doing? I Watch can't it. believe this. You bump into me. Step I'm up, trying bro. to eat Step this girl. Off. I'm walking here. <laughs> right. Hey. They start getting so mad and fighting each other that they don't even notice, and she falls right next to them on the ground, and they're just rolling each other so over fighting. fighting. Although, if anyone else has two boys, <laughs> and if that's yeah, but the this case. This is not even boys. This is like, you yeah. can picture it in a bar when the two dudes yep. fighting over a girl, yes. and then the girl like walks away, she and they don't even notice first. it. Yes. She, yep. looked yeah. she looked at me first. She looked at me. She looked at me. Then, the, she ends up falling into a hole, rolls down, out a window, to Ian, who's just waiting there going... The chopper's here. Yeah, I'm glad the you Ruth made Goldberg it. Goldberg machine here was ridiculous. Yeah. Like, <laughs> bing, boom, boom, yep. bing. Right, and he yep. just happens to be like, "I knew this is the way you'd come out." Yeah, yep. and and they run to the chopper and fly away. Which I took mean, you that so guy's long. like that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. From being in peril with the Raptors to everything's cool. We're on one on the of their vehicles, it says, "Ingen, we make your future." And yeah. I was like. Well, what? Well, because the door was open. It said sucky on the door. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, yeah. Thank we you. make your future Thank sucky. Thank you. Okay. Because okay. as they're flying away and they look out the window, she says, Sarah goes, oh, my God, and opens the chopper door mid-flight to look at it, the T-Rex. And none of had. them are belted in. And they have a window that you can look out of. She noticed the thing out the window, but let's open the door of this chopper. And they're like, oh, they have a T-Rex. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Maybe she's got that luck from Deadpool. That's like her skill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously, because she opened a door mid-flight, none of them fell out. Yep. Maybe it was a Boeing cop <laughs> helicopter, <laughs> and she just didn't. She didn't mean to open it, but it, it just, just opened. She touched it. It <laughs> flung open. Yeah. Oh, I know. I've been hearing about that. Uh, we do get a little scene here before we finally head back to the mainland, United States, San Diego, to be specific, where uh, Peter Ludlow is. They're so thrilled they're getting this T Rex off the island. Offers a job at the park to Trembo, uh, who has you know, uh, even though he's gotten his prize, seems to be a little bit dejected and down, and he has this kind of great. Well, line, he I didn't. Thought. He wanted to kill a buck, though, yeah. right? Yeah, and Not he didn't get it. to. But instead. I believe I've spent enough time in the company of death. I thought that's a great It line. is. Yeah. But then again, if you're a hunter you're gonna <laughs> yeah. for your whole life, isn't that kind you're, of what you do? That's what you do. But in this case, his guys were dying. That's okay. the way that's I fair. took it. Yeah, his guys oh, died. If humans thinking. are dying, never yeah, mind. No. It's, it's better. Terrible. I'll shoot an animal Animals in the head right dying now. is better than humans dying. Frank went over. Uh, all right. Everybody so let's went get... and opened a shelter afterwards. Sure. Like, uh, animals, for dinosaurs. Like, yeah. <laughs> Back this in San Diego, a little tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> Back in San Diego, Peter Ludlow is San in... Diego. San Diego. He, Peter the Grabular isn't on the mainland for four minutes, and he's holding a press conference about how we're opening a dinosaur zoo. Here it comes. He's, it's still three in the morning, I feel like. He just yeah. got... It's the, early. He said it's early. Is there. Go to sleep and they're, then wake up and do it. They're on the boat. He's like, no, we got to tell that whole world right now. We're, yep. we're opening a dino museum. It's going to be sweet. It had to have been a couple days because the boat returning later, yeah. they say it's still 48 hours out. So it took four days to get the dinosaur here. Oh, my gosh. Um, they Wars and customs won't let you bring a hamster through without quarantining it. Like... Who's yeah, cool know. with dinosaur coming through? Dinosaurs are real, basically, is all I want to say. And it's going to be sick. Pre-orders are open. Come on you in. Know, get, smash get the like get, button. Smash the like we, button. We turned Qualcomm Stadium into <laughs> Jurassic Park over here. And wouldn't you... That's why the, so that's why the Padres moved. <laughs> and would you right. believe From it? Petco. Yep. He, they do talk about the San Diego Chargers in this movie. Yeah. Now the yeah. LA Chargers, sadly. But what, he goes, would you believe it? Almost immediately, there's a problem, guys. Would you believe that? No. no he doesn't even finish the press conference. And like, there's a problem with the boat. Uh, we lost all communication with the boat, and uh, probably means they're dead. It's coming in fast. That's what I would it's think. It's coming in real fast. But he even let's says, all just stand like, oh, still. early. <laughs> <laughs> this made no sense, guys. Because no. how did the T Rex kill everybody on the ship? That was my question. I think I know. I think the baby did. 
The baby killed everybody. No, because the baby's baby, not with them. The baby, the baby was, was already in the secure facility. facility remember? Get him. Baby I was thought already, it was yep. out and they got it. In the, no. Okay. No. Because they started. show it inside that thing, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. trying to get out. And a hand is holding the butt yep. that clearly was eaten off. Yeah. Which, if you have no more strength because you're dead, why would you still be grasping this it? That's what I'm saying. But how did the T Rex get its dumbass self back inside well, the, the hold then after eating everybody else? The only thing I guys, can think of guys, is. It, it, it ate the people on the bridge. The bridge is tiny. You yeah. have to go through a human sized door. Yeah. The, the guy that drives the boat, his hand is on the steering wheel. It should have yeah. fallen off. So it, it, well, fine. But the T Rex got into the bridge and yeah. ate the guy while he's driving well, the boat? I thought it was Yeah, it doesn't make it, sense. It did like a, you know, a, a big lizard or something. Got it with his tongue, snapped it right yeah, down the bridge through the window, ripped realize. it off. That's what, it is. That's what happened. That's why he was trying to for a nap. put his tongue on her in the waterfall where Maybe he was trying, he was trying to grab her. Maybe if bites you and you don't die, I, you become a zombie. And right. then a zombie Ooh. ate everybody else on the boat. Yes. I just don't understand. Because I thought for sure it was the baby too. And then I remember, no, they already brought the baby the, and it was already at the zoo. They should have... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, this is one of those scenes that yeah, there's always that suspension of belief and reality, right, when you're watching something like this. Yeah. But this is one of those scenes where it's real hard to do that because how if that dinosaur was in the cargo hold, right. locked in, how did everybody die? Right, it makes no and sense. And you only had the one, right? It's not right. like the they had both of them. Famously, one, they made it clear they didn't get any other right. Unless another one jumped on. Oh, or those little, what are they called? Harpies? Compies. Or Compies. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. Or just like a, a velociraptor. Yeah. It, it, theoretically, it could have just you know gone on the... Some other secret and part. They jumped sh- off the yeah. just dove off for a nice swim because it was hot. Well, yeah, because maybe it, there's like a, a dino gold, you know, like uh, yeah. Ian Malcolm, who like his daughter now stowed away on the. Oh uh, my boat. gosh, right. exactly. Yeah. And probably had another baby. So probably. they should have had it where they also had some raptors or something, and that's what helped kill the people maybe or something like something. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know why the dinosaur. How would the T Rex have gotten out of the its big cage? Right. That that's it's what we all just strapped asked. down. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay. In, in but like some. the cage is all intact. Like it doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. This movie um, makes no sense. Idiot boy number four grabs the loading dock controls and opens them. Out comes sure. the T-Rex. Even with Ian Peter, going, Peter told uh, him to do it. Don't do that. Again, Yeah. no one listens to it, Ian. But everybody else just stood there. And the T-Rex is now loose in San Diego. Fun. And this is where Sarah and Ian, and, and Ian go make Ludlow tell them where the infant T-Rex is. Well, it's in a secure facility. Right, he's like, where is the secure facility? Right, and it's the Nicole from Mummer Man shot where he comes in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Face first, <laughs> right there. Uh, you got to see the film to know what the talking. Yeah, about. Rexy, meanwhile, has made his way into a neighborhood and is casually drinking from a pool, a swimming pool in somebody's backyard. And man, this dog was this poor dog. I was more upset about the dog than any human right. that died in this movie. <laughs> was just trying to protect the house. Yep, trying to do its job. But the thing is, like, do. <laughs> Stop chaining your dogs up outside in general. <laughs> maybe well, the dog could have gotten away. Right? It's pretty warm out. It maybe, doesn't maybe the dog could have gotten away. There's outside dogs. That yard was, was fenced in. Don't do it. Was your wife, is it, did she say that when you were watching it? Was she pissed off about oh, the, do- I, the chained in dog? Both of us were. I yeah. bet. I oh, bet. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong with having a dog outside? We'll get into that later. But I figured they Wolves were trying to I mean, make a reference to the goat from the previous it's movie. Not good. I think with the, the hanging <laughs> yeah. out of the doghouse hanging out of the mouth, yeah. I think you're right. Got all sorts of problems that could happen there. Bring your dog inside. <laughs> on the, the post dog? show, we'll go into whether or not dog you should is, leave your dog We have a very outside. strong Family. disagreement on how to treat animals. It's overnight, right? They're all asleep. <laughs> so the dog just sleeps out there? Yeah, dude. Right, there's outside dogs. Saying. There's people that keep it Chained the up. Outside. You got yeah, forest yeah. fires all over California. Yeah. <laughs> you got wrecks out in the backyard. Up, man. It's ridiculous. You don't well, they don't know about the T-Rex. on this one. Well, now they can't have it. I don't care if there's a T-Rex or not. There's plenty of other things. The kid tells mom and dad there's a dinosaur in our backyard. Super cash. Which was and, funny. Uh, yes. And of course, it starts a fight between yeah. these two people that clearly hate each other. You should turn this fish uh, tank light off. <laughs> I told you you couldn't sleep with it. It's on. not the light. This is obviously your fault. There's a dinosaur in our backyard, right? I told you it's not the T-Rex. That's not the problem. <laughs> <laughs> these are the kind of parents that keep me in business. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Sarah are... Th- now, this is made me laugh. Because what did he say when they said, where's the T-Rex in? In a secure facility. They drive right through the front gate. Yeah. Of there's some guards going, hey, they drive through the gate all the way into the zoo and pull up and park right next to the cage where this baby T Rex is in this secure facility. 
open the cage, no problem. Have the T Rex in their arms before another security guard goes, Hey, what are you guys doing? Don't they have guns on them? Yeah, they, have <laughs> they guns do. On them. They and then they say something them. clever and they're like, Oh, if you're going like, to shoot us, shoot us. Yeah. Yeah. I think no one's ever gone there. No one's ever cared. So they're like, This job is cake. The, there, was no, there wasn't a single barrier for when, once they crashed through the gate to get all the way to the baby T Rex. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, now in town, they're in like some downtown area. People are running for their lives. Screaming! This poor guy gets eaten trying to go into a blockbuster. Do you know who that was? That was David Kep. That was the screenwriter of Jurassic Park and Lost oh. World getting eaten. Uh, the only guy that got eaten while he was while T Rex was ripping through eating huh. stoplights and all the hilarious you know, fake movie posters fake that are movie, up there. Yeah. With the Did Robin you see Williams, Arnold? Arnold, yeah. Arnold yep. was a, on a Arnold, King Lear King poster. Lear. <laughs> yep. You know how bad I want to see Arnold's King Lear? King Lear. That's right. It would be awesome. Like Bean Bubble, Jack bubble, or toil, like and trouble. That's right, dude. It was like, be it was like, awesome. it was like Bean Stalkin Jack for Robin Williams was up there. Yeah. Yes. And there was some Tom Hanks movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah Tom yeah. Hanks like surfing or something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, it's good Man, stuff. And the 90s Kings all in one place. Good stuff. <laughs> Plus uh, block, Blockbuster was I thought, the king. I yeah. thought the Godzilla yeah. shot was a step too far. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? I, yeah. Where they just have these four Asian businessmen right. screaming yeah. and looking yeah. over each other. I'm like, I get the joke, but it's kind of seems So apparently, stupid. though, yeah. Spielberg's favorite movie. Uh, which is fine. And so that's why the name of the boat, even, I think, was named after the same boat that yeah. brought Godzilla oh, over. I don't cool. think, I'm not calling out to say it was in poor taste or racist. No. Or I just think it was so hammy and so kind of slapsticky Very that it, it belongs in a different movie. And it could have been, yeah. if it was half as long, you know even though I mean? it was only seconds, Yes, half as long as that might have been better. Right. But it just seemed like it was in the wrong movie. It was yeah. supposed to be a little more. Because at this yeah. point, you should have just had Ron Burgundy announcing right. the news for San Diego. Right. There's a T-Rex. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Taking out the bus was awesome, though. When it ran across yeah. the next to that bus, it just <laughs> dented in the whole side of it. Yeah. That was and cool. then the human beings went flying through the safety glass on the <laughs> yes. other side. That's crazy. Yes. Just a couple of them just yeah. popped just right through. Just flying right through. I'm like, awesome. um, I don't know about that. <laughs> Uh, all right, so the, they got the convertible with the baby T-Rex, Ian and Sarah, and they roll up at a 67 uh, gas station, Phillips uh, what, 76. 76. 76. Phillips 76. I said 67, sorry. Uh, in a convertible, and they got the baby, and then the T-Rex catches the scent and follows after them. And she's like, you should slow down a little bit, you know? I mean, he's like, nope, I'm not slowing down. <laughs> it was back pretty cool says, that yep. the but Phillips he, 76 yeah, ball, the ball rolls right rolls past, past them. Yes, but then at awesome. the same time. He's going backwards with this T Rex, yeah. like within sniffing distance of the bumper. Yes, and somehow still has the ability to whip I that thing whip around it, to drive forward. No, that T Rex was stepping on you and done again. I, I did dead appreciate and life over. Another spinoff is yes. Fast and the Furious mixed. Yes, er, yes, mixed in San Diego drift. That's it. I did appreciate that one shot of animal control uh, driving oh alongside. Yeah, that was I'm fantastic. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah. good, animal control is on the scene. Yeah, so the we dog catchers are here. We they were. Running away, yeah. You can get this under good. control right yeah. now. We got animal control. And again, you have another situation where they start going oh. backwards and somehow can still flip Feedy. around and go. It's a T Rex. Get the stick. Yeah. <laughs> Over no. here, buddy. Over here. I got him. I got him. I got his tail. <laughs> Uh, they take the baby all the way back to the boat and put it back in the cargo hold. And Peter Ludlow shows up like, give me that baby back. I want my baby back. I want my baby back. My baby back. back. <laughs> Ribs. <laughs> Chili's. All right. And uh, <laughs> heads down into the car. So now the lawyer goes into the cargo hold back. I want to get this damn baby myself. So Ian and Sarah jump off the boat. They do. They're like, bye. Which yeah, they keep themselves off the boat. And they're still speaking. You're not going to get also. back up on land as quickly as they do. No, the whole at this point they're just moving chess pieces around. Yeah, in, yeah. In we need them fashion. off the boat. Okay, jump off the edge. Right. Um, I'm sure he runs slowly, so he swims slowly. Also, <laughs> mom shows up. The mom T Rex, sh- no, it was a dad. I couldn't tell. I don't remember. Parent T. Parent T Rex shows up and just maims the lawyer in the cargo hold. Bites his leg and allows the junior to Aww. finish him off. It's a real bonding moment right. there. I'm training, teaching you. Yeah, it's teaching. Training. Training. It is training. It's training. You were right the whole time. They do get training. Uh, actually, get trained. A, no, so but he thought was it was a lion day tamer. <laughs> Usually, it's like film strips, but you know they'll do That's this right. too. Uh, Sarah then shoots the T Rex with a dart. And they boat him back 
to the island with his baby. And CNN is all over this thing, let me oh, tell yeah, you. And John Hammond pitches conservationism on the TV and all is well. And they're like, and oh, they, isn't this great? This We're going to save this island. They sent a Navy flotilla to escort the sink <laughs> back. The There's more and more battleships joining it. Why didn't you nuke the freaking island when you got there? The yes, president should have said, screw you, John Hammond. We're going right. to, we're sending these battleships. There are what nukes. Right. We're blowing this thing up. Okay. Okay, well, then the nuclear bomb would somehow activate the yes. uh, ribo. The third, island, the third island. Something, something, something. <laughs> Thank God for Site C. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, Seriously, this is what's funny is John Hammond's like, and it's okay because we'll, we'll keep this isolated and safe and like, you know, all that. Yeah, it was dumb. Um, I was just going to say, so when a, shark attacks, when a shark attacks somebody, they hunt the shark and kill it. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. When a dinosaur attacks somebody, they're like, let's make sure to get it back to its home safe right. and sound. And leave it alone. Yeah. And leave it alone. Just, doesn't just, make any sense. This, just, this will be okay. We, we have more movies separate. to make. It's going to be fine because we'll, we'll all stay separate, except the final shot of the movie is of freaking pterodactyls. They can fly? Luckily, they can't go anywhere. Right. What? There's and an imaginary force credits. field around the island. And I'm sure velociraptors can make boats if they can't swim. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they, You can see them working it out. <laughs> <laughs> Clever girl. Did you, know, did you know that Spielberg has a cameo in the final opening, in the they final remember. scene? Yes. Spielberg? Yes. In the reflection, in, in the of, reflection the TV. of the TV. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. I meant oh, to mention that. Oh, fun. Yes. While Ian's watching CNN in, in the reflection yeah. of the TV. Instead of the daughter. Because yeah. she's the one that's in between them, I believe. Right. Yeah. It's it's a, you can just barely see it. So that's the, the end of that beer. movie, guys. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. At the very end, no one had touched their dinner, and I hated it. <laughs> You're gonna make that much food. Have that's fun. a lot of food. There's a you know I have a lot of complicated can, feelings about. Can this we make movie. this better? I think we could make it better. Can I think we, we could have made it better by putting those training sequences in there yes. and having basic training. Yes. I think we could have made it better. Training sequences by having raptors yep. build boats. Yep. Yeah. As he's saying, we'll keep it isolated and safe, and they're like sh- you know carving a canoe out That's of right. a, you know whittling one out of a tree <laughs> or whatever with their claw. You know, just <laughs> doing the predator stupid. bow. Perfect. Or we could just be. Make it super easy and just add Arnold Schwarzenegger nope, to the movie. Could do that, sure. and that would immediately make the Lost World. You could just punch the T Rex. Yes. or maybe he's the baby T Rex. Ah! Oh. <laughs> but maybe he's just all the dinosaur What's noises. Funny? <laughs> is that what? So oh Svan, gosh, Svan yes. Partillo, who is one of our patrons, literally said that he said he could do the screams for the baby T Rex. Yeah. Thank you. So there you great. go. It's just every time he calls points. for his mother, uh, you know, he's calling for his mother. <laughs> Be awesome. I actually had the same idea. So J.P. Dozier, who uh, did the awards for first Jurassic Park 2, uh, had the same idea as me. I was just like, let's make him Nick, right? Mm-hmm. And he, he's like, it'd be so obvious that he's not there to take pictures. And like, he's he's the backup plan. Makes more sense if it's Arnold. Yeah. Uh, Hammond sent the backup plan. Like, I'm just here to take pictures. You know, he's got like. <laughs> How know, do I work this thing? Uh, predator <laughs> gear on. He's dressed like he is in Predator. I'm right. just here to take pictures. He's got, you know, you know bandoliers on. And stuff, <laughs> it's the right? sixth and, camera that Nick has smashed in the last hour. <laughs> I don't right. know if he's ever worked one. And then you get the commando load up scene when Nick is like, when Nick does his thing where he's like, I'm the backup plan and pulls out a wrench. He's like, Strapping on all the yeah. I am the backup plan. That'd be incredible. Right? It'd be awesome. And then he goes in to the camp and just kills everybody. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Be a way different movie. Listen, you should not fear dinosaurs. You should fear man. And just start, you know, just mowing down all of them, dude. When Trembo's like, I'm, I want to hunt the world's, the second, yes. whatever. He's, what does he say? The first, he says, the, 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 the second greatest predator is going to hunt them. the first. And then, yeah. Arnold just steps Ar- in. He's like, wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Arnold's, Arnold's the world's <laughs> first greatest predator. Me. What you did not realize is you are actually the third best <laughs> predator. <laughs> okay. Actually, no, you're not even top five because then there's the predator that I fought in the jungle and that's like he's in the top five for sure. <laughs> okay. And then there's a the T-Rex and then there's another predator for the Danny Glover fought in Predator 2. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then there's me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this gift. <laughs> oh, so good. You know, no, like that's yeah. it would be incredible. That you, so I, JP goes. He should replace Vince Vaughn. Think of Arnold in the scene where he tells everyone he is John Hammond's backup plan. I think I should tell you guys. Hammond told me these people might show up. 
I thought we'd be finished by the time he got started. And in case they weren't, he sent me to be the black, the black, uh, the backup plan. And then he, which has to be punctuated with the racking of a shot. Yes. Yeah. So, or it doesn't yeah. work. Okay? Right. I added that part, but it's an important little, you know, yeah, you need the shotgun <laughs> rack. Right. And Sarah goes, what backup plan? Me. Yeah. Right. That's it. Done. That's it. Tell me this movie wouldn't. I mean, I made six hundred million dollars, but you throw Arnold into a Jurassic Park movie. Double why it. wouldn't they do that? Double it and give it to the next person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason, uh, Jason Ryan, also playing with us, says if Arnold would have been Eddie instead of Richard Schiff, the satellite phone would have worked, <laughs> <laughs> and he would have gotten everyone back to the boat. Called it's the high hide. It's not. It's yeah. It's not. It doesn't have the same ring to it. Right? No. Get to the get to the barge. I don't know how do you. What's a word that sounds better? That's still a boat. Uh, that sounds better when Arnold says. I don't it, know. Like, get to the ship. Nope. No. Get das to boat. get to the das boat. <laughs> Just make it a chopper. <laughs> get to the chopper. Yeah, that's, that's. At the end, you could do it, right? And he and he could have. Arnold yeah. would have just pulled that RV back on land. Right. He wouldn't even mess so around saying, with the wind. He would have put the rope on it and just, just pulled, pulled it. Pulled it. Strong. Eddie it. Eddie couldn't do crap. He needed a jeep, a winch, and a rope, and he couldn't do it. And he still got torn in half seconds. by T Rexes. Listen, with you with you guys okay down there? And he's like, Yeah, we need a rope. He's like. Hold on, and he just throws down the rope and just pulls them up. And you yeah. know what? Arnold's Arnold's holding onto a rope and he's punching T Rexes when they right. show up. And, or he's just holding them on the rope. He's like, "Hold on, don't let go." And he Spartan kicks the front of the RV and sends it down around them and then pulls yep. them up. He would have just made fun of their tiny arms and made <laughs> them feel bad about Look themselves and run away. It's amazing, it's a man. That's right. I can't even believe you were able to hold on to this rope. Look at you. Look at puny. these pectorals are so sad. And your little. arms are like the T-Rex. That's, that's right. You look like a T-Rex with your tiny little baby arms. Maybe sometimes you need to <laughs> skip leg day and work on the upper body. <laughs> All right, guys, let's, uh, let's start giving out some awards, and we're going to start with the yeah. most prestigious award we give out, the Will Patton Award for Intensity. You want a war? I'll give you a war! I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night! And if they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember forever that's right it's time for will Patton. what are you doing with a gun in space let's go the most intense actor ever go ahead nicole you got your person it's it's uh pete puzzle sweet i think that's how you say it i've been just like just planting my flag and just doing it the and internet will tell it. us eventually they'll get pissed off yeah. but you think you right. think you think pete gets that one pete all right uh, we've got J.P. Dozier saying also Pete Postlethwaite, whenever he was on screen, he was all eyes on him. Mm -hmm. He was such a badass the entire time. Didn't take crap from anybody, even from the guy who hired him, trying to name the dinosaurs but failing. I mean, that was just his, even his final scene was amazing with the uh, enough time in the company of Deathline. And his son, Ryan, who also played along for Jurassic Park, said Julianne Moore. He said he just really liked her. Okay. So that's cool. Yeah. But that's two votes for Pete as we go to Pat. Uh, Patrick. I'm going with PDP. PDP as well. That's a better way to say it. Right? PDP. Fine, fine, fine. fine. Yeah, because I felt like everybody else really kind of, we talked about it. There wasn't a lot of intensity, yeah. mm -hmm. but he was intense. I Look at this, guys. Jason Ryan went Pete Postlethwaite for Roland, the man who went there to hunt the T-Rex. He goes, uh, he also talks about how the monologue was really, really good, the case of Scotch line, and uh, and his final line being reason. So basically the same reasons that JP gave, but they both are super into Pete. I also went Pete Postlethwaite for all the reasons I stated earlier. Uh, I mean, man, when Spielberg says you're one of the best actors on this rock, uh, that says it all right there. I thought he was the only one that acted like he had a bunch of dinosaurs around him. Yep. Uh, and then finally, you've got Svan Portillo before we go over here to the Ryans. He gave it to the T-Rexes. During the RV scene, <laughs> they were pissed off. They weren't playing any games and wasted no time. You got to give it to a person, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they went hard. They, I, they, they went hard. Five but points. You got to plant your flag in an actor. And uh, don't worry. Next time. <laughs> Madela. Uh, I give it to Pete as well. Pete Postlethwaite. Mueller. Even though he didn't come up with any sick rhymes about <laughs> T-Rexes. <laughs> Brother I'm Gilbert. Going. PDP, Brother Gabriel, man. All right, dude. That means crushing the vote here. Crushed. Pete Postlethwaite is going to win, deservedly so, the Will Patton Award for Intensity. 
Apostle Wait wins posthumously. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. He passed away in 2011. 11, yeah. So it's been 13 years since he hasn't been making films anymore. But, man, glad he left us behind this, all this awesome work to go back over There's and watch There's quite a again. lot. A Did lot. he win it two weeks in a row now? Uh, no, he, he was it? Unsung Hero. Oh, that's right. He was Unsung yeah, Hero. Sean Connery yeah. won. The, oh, that's yeah, right. That's, that's right. right. Uh, all right. Next award we give out is in honor of the worst actor that's ever been in a movie, Mr. Steven Seagal. It's the Steven Seagal Trash Can Full of Dirt Award. Trash can, oh, trash can. It's a trash can full of dirt. Yeah. Love never dies. And neither do they. Love is eternal. And that's a long time. All right, Nicole. I know you're probably chomping at the bit to put this crown of, well, or the <laughs> lid of the trash can on somebody's head. But the trash can is angry. It needs to be fed. And if we don't put something in there, it's going to vomit back up it's Natalie Portman's performance from <laughs> Phantom Menace or something like that. We're no going to be in stuff. trouble. It's like that T Rex getting off the boat. We got to feed it. Got to feed it. Uh, I think that if you had put any other child in there it would have been the same movie yeah yeah because he probably had a, would have had a stunt double anyway for the flipping so it didn't matter even if she was a skilled gymnast right like for with spider-man he could actually flip so he's yeah. great but for her could have been anybody vanessa chester then vanessa. Is to, yeah i'm sure you tried real hard and did what they said yeah uh jp went with arliss howard as peter ludlow huh. he goes i understand he was supposed to be the corporate villain of the movie but he was just kind of bland for most of it and his son said thomas f duffy because a snake scared him and he was eaten by a t-rex <laughs> <laughs> he definitely gets like the uh charles darwin award of the movie <laughs> you know but uh patrick who you got for your trash can nomination speaking of charles darwin you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah I hate to do this because, you know, us redheads, we're going extinct. Oh. Showing up less and less. I really like Julianne Moore most of the time, but I didn't like her in this. Wow. No, I get it. And I think, again, I think a lot of this falls on the writing and the, and the, and the directing and the editing because I don't think they really gave her much to work with. Right. But I just, I didn't feel like. She really, I mean, this could have been anybody, I think, I in that role. Another thing that, that's missing, I think, was a, was a, a uh, specialist who actually knew this stuff. And that's what yes. was in movie one. Mm -hmm. you, you just looked to them, Grant and Durden, and you just knew that that's what they were, I, they could yeah. tell you. But with her, since she only knew a little bit about her theory about the T-Rex, I think that also was another like writing slash directing thing that Great observation. dug her to hold. No, 100%. You know, you, you bring up a valid point that I can't believe I'm just now thinking of. He was a chaos, a chaos theorist. Right. Mm -hmm. Why was this Hammond's boner to get him back to the island and not Alan Grant? Alan Grant. Yeah. Or or, or Sadler. Sadler. Like, At least Sadler. Yeah. Wh wh why is that the one that you want to go back to the island? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Well, the other two said no to being in Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that's part of the reason why Goldblum wasn't yeah. selling it. Like, wait, wait, Sam Neill and Laura Dern said no? <laughs> God, hey, agent, can I get out of this contract yet? Yeah. Like, wait, no, it's much, ironclad, or, dude. How, you're how in. Or, yes, how much can I get what you were getting both of them yes, together right. yeah. uh, for just me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> a good point. In the movie, yeah, it yeah. doesn't make sense at all. Yep. Uh, so that's a vote for Julianne Moore. And also, Jason went Julianne Moore. She was the worst on the team, saying they couldn't make contact but they can only observe but let's try to pet a baby stegosaurus leaving her bag and equipment all over the place always very loud keeps her shirt covered in blood while they're being chased and definitely was not on top of her field as she was described and so that's two votes we got one for vanessa and i also am going with vanessa chester as the daughter i th i just thought the kids in the first one were such a great part of the movie, and I don't feel the same. I don't think anybody could have done those. I thought they did a really great job. Mm -hmm. I know you wanted one to act like he was dying more, but Ariana Richards, and I can't remember the boy's name, did a good job, and I just felt like she was just an actor. I wonder if for there. the first one they had them get together ahead and like hang out and make chemistry happen. Because yeah. in this one, I think they just f dropped him in from helicopters right. and had him start acting. You, right. Well, you almost wonder too if the two, if the two original kids were going to come back originally was part of it. Did they shoehorn this character in right. because they because it, it didn't feel yeah. like she was. She just was there all yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, hey, you have a daughter, remember? Yeah. Also, no chemistry between him and his daughter. Even no. though they were a bad, he wasn't the greatest always around dad, I didn't even believe he right. cared about her. So, yeah, so right now it's two for Vanessa, two for uh, Julianne Moore as we go to Mr. Madela. I went with Julianne Moore. Mm -hmm. Julianne Moore. Yeah, I think the daughter, I do agree that the daughter just shouldn't have been written into the script in the first place. Mm -hmm. She served no purpose. The whole kick, kicking yeah. the raptor out the window didn't matter. Yeah. Didn't need to happen. But um, Julianne Moore just sucked. A huge <laughs> <dunk away. laughs> 
<laughs> she straight to the point. I like it. She just, I don't know. It, she just sucks. I read on IMDb. That I don't know she, her as an actress. I don't. I haven't seen a lot of her stuff. No, I got she's you. better in other things. Though. I'm sure she is. <laughs> I read on IMDb that she. It, anyway, she said that she took the role for two reasons. She wanted to work with the with the director, and also she had a divorce that she needed to pay off. So oh well, that that makes sense. Well, too. and like, I know what you're saying about like oh the script and how they shoot it, how they cut it, whatever. That's all valid points. But I do think like as the actor, like your whole job is to sell whatever right. scene you're in. Like Pete sold his crummy dialogue. Right. Yeah, and yep. she just didn't sell yeah. anything. Yeah. Well, and that's why like, yeah. when the one guy was saying, you know, was talking about like the ways that she did things wrong. Like that's the character. That's right. the problem. Right. I mean, she had to deliver well, those that's, lines. That's but, yeah. the thing. Like if this was, if this, if the trash can was for stupidest character, then it gets, yeah. then Mox's dad wins, you know, or Julianne yeah. more for me. But if it's about who the worst actor is in this, the book for me was Vanessa but uh, it's three to two right now but here with the last vote from the patrons uh, Svan goes look I felt like Bob was staring over my shoulder like the ghost of Ben Kenobi talking about how terrible Kelly was <laughs> anybody could have done that role figured I could get dinner ready by the time you guys got back she almost gets everyone killed multiple times and she's a liability she got cut from the team and should have been cut from the movie Honorable mentions would be the rich scumbag parents from the beginning and the scumbag parents who clearly hate each other in San Diego. But as we now go to the kids' table, it is a 3-3 tie no pressure. between Vanessa Chester, the daughter, played Kelly, or Julianne Moore. So, Ryan, uh, if you're going to vote for somebody else, I'm going to make you break the no, tie. No, the okay. good news is is <laughs> these were the two I was down between for <laughs> trash can because watching their performances was like an eternity. It was a long time. <laughs> Ultimately, I'm going to go Julianne Moore just because she was in All the right. movie more. She was terrible. All right. That means Julianne Moore is going to win the trash can. Guys, in the last few weeks, we've given the trash can to like Natalie Portman, Julianne Moore. And I like her in other <laughs> stuff. It was just she was Tom yeah. Arnold of this movie. I know. I know. Just awful. The, she looked uh, like she had a divorce to pay off. I mean, this isn't really her. Like, she, she doesn't really no. do action adventure. No, type not stuff. really. Not really. I, mean, I was just look. She was like in Boogie Nights. She was in Mockingjay. She's, I, most of the other stuff I've seen her, yeah. she's not clothed she, either. No, right. so, she, I, I always mean, enjoy like, her performances. So. That's the other thing. I the, was shocked. The next award we give out is for the unsung hero, which means someone in a smaller role, not a main character, that really improved the movie through their performance. So here's the Steve James Unsung Hero Award. You know, every place you go, there's always someone who thinks he's a badass, right? Then there are those few who are. Chair family. Are you still kind of a badass karate boy? All right, guys. So, Nicole, let's go straight to you. Who is your unsung hero of the movie? The guy with the headphones who didn't know that Peter S. was going to go pee. Carlos. <laughs> yeah. All right. I he like sold that, it. Baby. I believed he was no. jamming. Yeah. And I believed he needs terrified of the T-Rex yeah. later on. Yeah. great. For sure. Uh, JP said, this was tough between Vince Vaughn and Pete Postlethwaite, but I had to go with who I enjoyed more on screen. It was definitely Pete by far. He commanded every scene he was in, had amazing lines. And uh, Ryan went with Vanessa Chester. He really liked how she kicked the Velociraptor out the window. <laughs> so, uh, but that's a vote for Pete. He gave him his Will Patton and Unsung Hero. I'm going to guess his kid's a little on the, the younger side. Yes, his too. kid is on the younger side. Yeah, yeah no, for sure. Patrick, who, who do you have as your Unsung Hero of the movie? Peter Stomari. Peter Stomari. Yeah, a yeah. Anything he's in, he just adds something. Even though he was a dick. Yeah. And normally he's not really. Like, he's still some, you know, like, Usually he's kind of gruff and grumpy, but yeah. Yeah. you know, you, but yeah, I mean, whether it's the Big Lebowski or Armageddon or yeah. Awakenings, yeah. any of the stuff he's in, yeah, I just like anytime he's in it. Minority Report when he's the eyeball doctor, right? Oh, yeah, God. just anytime Awful. he shows up, it's just great. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't pull focus, but you want to look at him anyway no, and see what sure. he's up to. Yeah. Sure. He's great. Uh, Jason went with Vince Vaughn for Nick Van Owen. Uh, he was the Hammond's backup plan, and uh, even uh, taking the bullets out of Roland's gun so he couldn't kill a T Rex. The scene showing how the group respected him instead of Peter when he was telling the group to get up tells a lot as well. It's a shame he just disappeared with Ian's daughter after they left the island. Hmm. Yeah, he just kind of disappeared from the Bye. movie at that point. So the votes, I don't think anyone's gotten a second vote yet, and they're still not going to because I gave my Unsung Hero Award to Richard Schiff as Eddie <laughs> because while the character was useless in the most important moment of his life, I really enjoyed Richard's performance of Eddie, and I thought out of the team, I liked it more than Nick and Sarah, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh my gosh, is Ian going with anybody that I like, but I liked Eddie, so that's why he gets my vote. Who do you got, Madela? So I actually had uh, 
Thomas Duffy, who is the paleontologist for InGen. Oh, the, with uh, the cowboy hat and the stuff. Cowboy hat Even guy. though he went out in kind of a stupid way with the snake. <laughs> yeah. I really liked his performance throughout where he's explaining about the fire tuck dinosaur. Yes. And, and just in general, I liked his character. And like part of the Stephen James Award that we've talked about is that you want to know their, like more about them. You want to rather see something right. about what they would do. And but he I, died. I would have liked to see. <laughs> right. But you right. could do like a backstory on you know previous stuff that he had done, whatever. Right. Like how did he. He's super into the dinosaurs, and I don't know. I thought he was yeah. a cool character. Yeah, like how did he become a paleontologist and not know that this yeah. snake is not venomous? <laughs> I uh, do want to know that to part. To be fair, paleontologists study dinosaurs, not snakes. Right, but they're going to take a lot of biology courses. Yeah, so, they should know they're snakes. Svan Portillo, we finally got a second vote for something. He also went Eddie. I get so frustrated every time I watch this when he's trying to pull the gun out of the netting, but he keeps getting caught. His God damn it, he says, is so relatable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's well, true. and you never get something caught on something, and you're yeah. trying to pull it and it just won't Especially work, when the right? T-Rex trying to eat you. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. That happens like every weekend. That's true. Uh, Ryan, right now, Eddie's in the lead with two votes. Who you got over there? Eddie's in the lead. Um... I'm going to have to go with Peter Stomari. Yeah. I just enjoy everything he's in. Okay. I thought he he brought it. I like he was zapping the dinosaurs and then the little guys, and then they get him. I mean, I All right. Well, that enjoy his performance. Nicole and Ryan Madela, you've got to break this tie because Patrick and, and Ryan Mueller and I have created one uh, in between Eddie and Peter Stomari. So oh, between those two people, who would you who would you go with? Peter. With Peter? Who would you go with? It doesn't matter if I, how I would go. Well, you'd make another tie if you went Eddie. I can't make another tie, though. <laughs> you can if so you believe matter. it. Tell us That's what your fine. heart says. No, we can give it to Peter. I like think Peter's won this award and the Will Patton Award before on multiple occasions. And so what's one more trophy to add to the case gets for Peter Stomare? Well we'll done. give it to him, the unsung he's, hero. He's going to have to build another award. room in his house. Right? For all the awards. Uh, right. this PDT is it. and PDS really coming through. No, now that we're no longer doing three favorite things, Pete and for Pete, some right? of you... Yeah. Some of you might not know this because we announced it in the last episode. We are no longer doing three favorite things. Instead, if you have favorite things you'd like to talk about, incorporate them into your final thoughts. Use them to explain why you like or dislike a movie. Go for it. But we're doing a new feature here that we're going to be carrying through to future episodes where we start talking about actors that have appeared in multiple BMR movies. We want to start with it like once they've been in at least three. Because there's a couple people in this movie like this is Jeff Goldblum's second one. He was in Buckaroo Banzai. And then I think this is P. Uh, P. Postlewaite's second one. He was just in Dragonheart. But so we're only gonna, BMR movies. BMR movies doesn't matter if they've been in GMR. GMR doesn't matter. Okay. Only in BMR movies. BMR proper. And we're going to talk about once people have been in more than four, they'll start having some drop off because we're going to start building the Mount Rushmore <laughs> of their BMR performances and ranking them one, two, three, and four. And so uh, today we've got a couple. We're going to talk about Peter Stomari really quick. He's this is his third BMR movie he's appeared in, and Richard Schiff. This is his fourth BMR movie that he's appeared in. So for some of you as an aide, since I know not all of you saw all these movies and know all of these performances, I put together just a little clip package for each person. So we're going to start with Peter and Chill. A little taste of each movie he's in, and then we're going to put him through one, two, and three. And if we disagree, then we'll just fight for an hour. It'll be fun. <laughs> here, uh, the, but this is Peter's pack- package. Here is the last you stand. Only here, what I have to offer. No, <laughs> old man, you oh, better put scene. that piece away before you blow your toes up. <laughs> We just talking here. And now when you cut it deep, you cut the tendons. And this is Constantine. Finger movement goes out the window. <laughs> Let me help you. I've got a whole theme park full of red delights for you. And then obviously, it's Lost World. Like it's not scared. There haven't been any visitors to this island. There's no reason for it to fear man. <laughs> now it does. All right, so those are the three performances. So, guys, I'll open the floor to everybody. How would we put these one, two, and three? I feel like there's an obvious number one at least, but that's just me. I'd put them in the order you had them in. Oh, so you did Last last Stand? Last Stand, Constantine, and Lost World. See, I think Constantine by far is out of those three was his best best performance. Um, I would would put – I mean, I don't know what you guys think. I would put Lost World last. Just it's smaller and it's not nearly as weird as some of the other parts that he's played. Right. So I would go, I would go Constantine, uh, Last Stand, and then Lost World. I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Based off of the clip, I haven't seen uh, uh, Last Stand in a long time. I think I saw it like maybe two years after it came out. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
based off the clips, I would say Last Stand would be third, and I would do Lost oh. World second. Really? Yeah. But maybe it's I'd have to see the last. If we were ranking it based on how weird and outlandish, that's one thing. Yeah. But then in Lost World, he couldn't be. That would have again stolen focus, like I was saying. Right. No, that's so, true. So he was being true. true to character. Hmm. So what would you rank it? Uh, Constantine is just so amazing yeah. that I just feel like that has to be a. a um, and I have not seen all the way through. Okay. Uh, the first one. So, so do we at least have? I mean, I know you don't have Constantine number one. Is that, do we at least have a four out of five on Constantine being number one? I mean, do you disagree? I haven't seen Constantine, but based on those little clips, yeah. I would say that that one looked like it was the best. All right. So we can say Constantine's number one, and then we just got to figure out where we're going to put the other two in because we have to come to a consensus. This is how this works. <laughs> the whole point of this is to have a segment where we can debate and, and discuss sure. this. So yeah. uh, uh, Lost World, definitely third. Definitely I, third. Just definitely third. And you're saying... Lost World would be before? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen the, the All full right. film. So if you want to excuse yourself, I didn't point you and say, I don't know enough. I will fine. recuse myself. You can recuse yourself. <laughs> I, I think I think Last Stand, for sure, I would agree with Ryan, would be, would be above Lost World. Does anybody want to argue that fact? I haven't seen Last Stand recent enough to probably talk to it. I haven't seen it. Perfect. Then we then because these guys don't watch the movies, we're locking this yeah, in, hey. Mueller. Okay. It pays to watch every movie All we right. do. So Constantine right. number one. So next time, get us a list of the movies so we can be watched <laughs> up on it. Just watch each movie when the episode We've comes out. We've done 150 out. movies. I mean, if bro. you just do it the week it comes out, then right. that's only one movie a week. Right. But I started catching up when I first started oh, well, listening. Yeah, I'm sorry. When I run my <laughs> podcast about movies, I'll do that too. <laughs> No, I'm just. You guys don't have to watch all the. And, movies, and Constantine, I agree. I mean, I okay. I was either either way. I I liked him a little better in Lost and uh, Last Stand, but all right. Having Constantine number one's not right. a bad call. So we're gonna go Constantine, Last Stand. Yep. Lost World. All right. Now here's Peter Schriff. Now Peter Schriff, who played Eddie, I don't have one clip here because he was literally guy in in or soldier in bunker in Tank Girl. Okay, so we're just gonna say that's fourth because yep. he didn't even yep. have a line of dialogue in Tank Girl at all. But here's the rest we saw from Peter Schiff. Richard. Richard. Richard Schiff. Schiff sorry. Yep. Okay. Bigger. And this is from Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. <laughs> oh, that's right. How about this? That's it. <gasps> Forest PT ninety nine. I don't think he's ever back. had the hair. Just punch a hole through the engine block of a Pontiac. Very nice. And Sophia. then this, <laughs> punch a hole through the engine block of a Pontiac. <laughs> and then this is obviously Lost World. So the animal's down before it even feels the uh, prick of the dart. Is there an antidote? What do you mean, like if you shot yourself in the foot? Don't do that. You'd be dead before you even realized you had an accident. Yeah, good stuff. And then this is him as MRI lab technician in Ghost in the Machine. Uh, he had three lines of dialogue in this one. Here we go. Five seconds, the total scan. What is it? This storm keeps surging the power. Where the hell did that go? And that was his entire performance. Yeah. You literally seen his entire performance from Ghost in the Machine. I believe it. <laughs> you seen those three. Did you see that movie? Yeah. Yeah, you were on, on the, the episode. episode. Okay, that's right. All right. I've seen all those movies. Perfect. Okay, so assuming Tank Girl is fourth, um, and I'm going to assume... That Lost World is number one. Yeah, Lost World is number one. We just have to decide. Oh, I disagree. What, what, which one of those is better than Stop Lost World? Stop or my mom will shoot. But you, he's the gun clerk guy? Yeah, he's better. And he did he it wasn't well. as good in, in Lost World. What are you talking about? Lost World's number two. All Ghost he, Machine is number three. All he said in, in, in the Estelle Getty scene is, this thing's going to punch a hole. Yeah. There are no <laughs> small parts. <laughs> All right. I mean, All it right. was a great line, but it's it's that Lost was better World. acting than what he did. You've also Stop seen my mom Lost shoot. World. in two, uh, unlike the Peter Sarman clips, in two of these movies, Stop My Mom Will Shoot and uh, um, Ghost, Ghost in the Machine. Machine. You saw his entire performance yeah. in those clips. Okay, obviously not in Lost World, but you've all watched. So that now movie. we're gonna say that it's part of this is how much they've acted. No, in no, no. Then? I'm just saying I'm letting you know that you're not missing any context right. or information. No, I'm you've just seen asking. The entire yeah, thing. I'm just no, no. It based doesn't on matter. that, I think that's better performance than Lost World. All right, does anybody agree with Madela that that was his best performance? No, that was his so second okay, best. Okay, so we got to come to an agreement, but if someone doesn't agree, then they're out. Well, we're going to have to move on at some point. So, like, with, just with the guns, we'd argue we, for came, an hour. we came to four out of five, right? <laughs> deadlock sure. jury. We yeah, can't, deadlock can't have jury. a totally deadlock jury. <laughs> so, eventually, we have to t appeal to a majority. I'm just trying to figure out the boundaries here. We have to eventually appeal to a majority, but if we can come to a consensus, that so would be perfect. boundary is capitulate. Okay. Give in. And tell us that it's the first. So, does anyone <laughs> else besides Ryan think that Stop My Mom Will Shoot is the best P Richard Schiff has done on a BMR movie yet? No. No. 
<laughs> he did a great job from that <laughs> clip. It might okay. be his best line. All right. Which is sad, all we have. it's not his best performance. Then can we at least establish <laughs> outside of Ryan that that is the Lost World is number one? Yes. yes. Sure. Okay. Now, if I can't have that as number one, then sure. Then is that <laughs> number two? Then? That's number two. Then. It's number you think two. it's better number than when he was MRI tech? Yes. 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 Absolutely. I, agree. I mean, I, I, mean I, he was confused. Where'd the guy go? But it, it All right. wasn't captivating. All right, fine. All right. You liked him in the Ghost in the Machine better? No, but I felt okay. like I believed he was an MRI tech. Sure. He was like, what is going on with this machine? I don't understand. I mean, that was pretty good. I mean, he didn't do... Even your acting right now is very good. Lego hands. Right, like but a did. non-MRI <laughs> technician might also say, what is going on with this machine? I don't understand. It's also true. I respect that. <laughs> they could, yeah, well. they could put one of us in there. I don't know what's going on. All so. right, so fine. So we're going to go... Let's make sure we get this. We're going to Lost World. This is his Mount Rushmore. He actually has four enough to do a We have to put heads do up a on this thing here. When, when he gets another Richard Schiff movie, one of them is going Tank away. Girl. Yeah. Tank, Tank Girl is going to go away, unless something's really terrible. But... It's because it's going to be Lost World, yep. then Stop From My Mom Will Shoot, then Ghost in the Machine, then the Tank Girl. Yep. All right. Look at that. We did. We just built a Mount Rushmore for Richard Schiff on BMR. Fantastic. And this, because as the show continues to go on and more and more movies, more and more actors will make more and more appearances and we'll have a through line that we can carry through from episode to episode. And I think that's fun. So that's what we're going to do. It's time to come to a final rating, guys, and land the plane. Nicole? Yeah. It's uh, The floor is yours. What is your final rating of The Lost World? I will begin by noting that I thought there were some really cool... I was going to say cinematography, but if it's fake stuff, what do you call it? Cool scenes. Yeah. When the... Um, T-Rex is walking through suburbia was yeah. cool. Uh, early on when Julianne Moore was looking through a fallen tree at the dinosaur that was trying to get her, that looked cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, bad movie. Just bad. Just straight up bad. Regular bad. Wow, I'm surprised. Okay, you really didn't like it. There was fast forwarding because there were some really long scenes. Even yeah. at the end, there was like 5,000 minutes long of just looking at yeah. Ian. Like, okay, great. It's deep, but it's enough. <laughs> um, did you watch it with anyone in your house? I did not. It was okay. just me. I'm always curious to find out what, I'm going to ask you in a minute what Laura thought, but all right, so just the boys didn't watch it with you. I didn't. They like dinosaur they're, movies? They're, they're, they're fine. It just, yeah. that was just the way the schedule was. All right, that's no, it's all good. It's not required that you watch it with your children. I'm just curious. Cool. Uh, JP Dozier said, look, this is a good movie that rules. This movie has a decent script, great actors, great effects, and it's still enjoyable. Though it didn't have that OMG feel the yeah. first movie had. It's still fun to watch. And his son Ryan said, good movie. It was fun for me to watch. And Ryan, uh, with Ryan, because he liked the first movie and Indiana Jones, he kept pointing out parts that were in the Lego game. I'm glad you enjoyed so, it. There you go. So we got one good movie, one straight up bad movie as we go to Patrick. So you don't try to compare movies, right? Like you try to let movies be their own thing. But when you're in a trilogy or a sequel or you're a reboot or any of that, you're right. going to get judged against the first one. For sure. Can't avoid it. Right. It, it's just because, especially because of the fact that there's a continuation of certain characters that come into this movie. Yes. Like Jaws 2, they <laughs> ramped up the amount of dinosaurs. And I felt it was unnecessary and it took away from the movie. Mm. I feel like you lost all the chemistry between characters that was there at all. You didn't really feel invested in any of the characters and therefore I didn't really care who lived and died. I just cared that the movie would end, <laughs> right? You had this whole San Diego scene that Spielberg said he initially wanted to put into a third movie, but because he was like, nah, I don't think I'm going to do another Jurassic Park movie. I'm just going to put it in here. But it probably should have been branched off. And it could explain why Vince Vaughn and everybody else is not there in that's that why part of it. It feels like it's tacked on. Right. And the acting was, eh. And yeah, they gave Gold, you know, Jeff Goldblum like good one liners, but overall, bad movie. All right. Fair, fair enough. And uh, look, we've got people here in the Patreon that definitely feel differently. Jason said, I think this is between a bad movie that rules and a good movie. The storyline isn't bad, and it's a movie I have no problem watching again and again. But Jason doesn't give us a final rating. So, Jason, I'm only uh, – don't be offended by this, but I'm only going to tell you what I tell everybody on the show. I think this is your first time doing awards, so don't sweat it too much. But you got to plant your flag, brother. you got to make a decision. I Don't tell me it's in between something. It's either a good movie – a bad movie that rules or a straight up bad movie. I'd say based on how he's saying that, it's a bad movie that rules, though. It's what you it know? seems like. Yeah. But yeah, you got to give me that. You got to hit me with that final rating, though, dude. Uh, yeah. Look, so uh, they're just. The, I didn't feel it from the actors, guys. There wasn't that awe that was in the first one. I, I don't want to belabor the point that I'd already said earlier, where it just didn't seem like anybody besides Pete 
was acting like they were around dinosaurs. And so that takes me right out of it. it. The movie was over long. I don't know what the runtime is compared to Jurassic Park, but it's more about how it feels. And it certainly felt way longer than the first Jurassic Park, probably because they tacked on a whole other ending, like you said, Patrick. Um, I do think there was enough funny dialogue, which I'm, it's like dialogue is like my most important thing when I watch a movie. Um, that I really enjoyed and I laughed out loud multiple times, which I can't say about most of the movies we did. So I'm going to say a bad movie that rules because I did enjoy myself, but man, it's not. And I, yeah, the, the worst thing that I was going for is that it's attached to the first one, just like with Jaws 2. Uh, it's nowhere near as good as the first one and some really, really bad stuff in there. But I enjoyed it to an extent. Bad movie that rules. Madela? I'd say, I'd say it's a good movie. Yeah? Yeah. I had a great time watching it. There you um, go. And... I know, like, we can pick apart all the stuff that's like, no, that doesn't actually, help. that's not how it actually happens in real life, whatever. Yeah. But I think uh, it is a very fun experience to 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 watch the movie. And I know what you're saying about the first one, obviously, is light years ahead of this one, but mm -hmm. it's it's a really fun movie to watch. All right, fair enough. Uh, and look, Sven also said, good movie all around. I thoroughly enjoy it and watch it probably once every two years. Besides that stupid boat crash scene that makes no sense, if you're not aware of the cut footage, it's an awesome movie that I will defend till the day I die. <laughs> so that's, guys, all three patrons went good movie, and Madela went good movie. So it's Well, we had one wishy-washy patron, too, though. Yeah, well, that's true. So maybe we do three... Three and a half. <laughs> two, okay. two and a half. And we've, had, and we've had three bad movie three ratings half, yeah. you know, from us with the rules. So it's about as split as the audience score would uh, anticipate it being as we go over to Mueller here. Yeah. You, you know, there's, as far as sequels go, there's definitely worse sequels out there than this one. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think if you look at it, it's coming on the heels, and this is four years on the heels of what I would say is probably a, one of those once in a generation ish type of movies in Jurassic Park where, you know, the actors are in awe, the audience is in awe of everything that's going on on screen. The animatronics were outstanding. I, you know, would give maybe a little bit of a Thomas Thomas to this one as well because you still had the T Rexes. I think, um, it, you know, if you're, if you're looking for something, fun and what I appreciate about this movie and what we've blistered other movies about is they didn't sell out on some of the action like dinosaurs eating people to sell toys and cater to kids like they did with uh, turtles and um, yeah. the other ones escaping me right now that we've done that we blistered on. Oh, Batman. Batman. Uh, for me, this, because of that and that some of the dialogue, yes, it has its problems. Was it ever going to measure up to Jurassic Park, the original, no, very few sequels ever do. But for me, it still edges into good movie territory. I have oh. fun watching it. It's a good watch. All right. I still enjoy the dinosaurs, even through some other ridiculousness yeah. that we pointed out. But still a good movie. All right, guys. So that's a, that's about equal measures of yeah. good and bad, I think, across the board from the patrons and from the panel here. And so I appreciate everybody's thoughts. And look, how do you feel about the movie? Hit us up and let us mm -hmm. know. We want to hear from you guys about The Lost World. And eventually when we get to Jurassic Park claw marks, you know, I think <laughs> we're going to see maybe this is just going to continue to go down and down and down. I know Alan Grant is back in the third one, right? I don't think Laura Dern came back for that one. No. But she does come back in like she part six back or in something. One of them, like yeah. yeah, I don't know. Remember. Two things this movie needed, more yeah. jello, some yes. jello, and uh, John Williams. Fair enough. Oh, that's right. We the didn't score. even talk about the score. The I did score. like too how they harken back a little bit to the score of the original at Occasionally, times. Occasionally, yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, it's time to move on to, well, I was, oh, I almost said Greener Pastures, knowing full well we're doing a Steven Seagal movie next week. And, <laughs> just uh, other pastures. Just other pastures that aren't green. Brown yeah, but it's pastures. a pile of shit, so it's fertilized pastures. <laughs> it's fertilized pastures. <laughs> Which makes it greener. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, uh, Eventually, it gets greener. Yeah. The first Seagal movie we've done since Under Siege 2, which was a while ago, uh, we are doing Half Past Dead, that 2002 action movie starring Steven Seagal and Ja Rule. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. So that's going to be a whole bucket full of fun. I'm busy that weekend. <laughs> and, uh, you know, make sure you guys watch Half Past Dead so you can, you know, yeah, weigh in on Seagal's Mount Rushmore next I, time you're in here for a Seagal movie. I actually gave Ja Rule the idea for Back That Ass Up. <laughs> no, that was juvenile. That's juvenile. Oh, I got the wrong one again. No, that's I always good. do that. 
I always think of ja Rule. Rule is the one whose uh, career was ended because he tried to beef with Eminem oh, and brought up his right, daughter, yeah. and then Eminem right. came back, and then yeah. it was like, hey, guys, remember when Murder, Inc. and Ja Rule were a thing? And we're like, nah, kind of, yeah. What was that all about again? <laughs> I always think of that duet he did with J-Lo, and I can never remember what the freaking song is. Put it on yeah. me? Was it? Is that what it is? I don't, I don't Put it on me, man. Yeah, 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 I think that's it. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about Jaw Rule. always on time. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's it. I just looked it up. Ja Rule and Steven Seagal in a movie. What could possibly right. go wrong? Uh, in the meantime, I just want to say thanks to Ryan Mueller. Thanks to Ryan Matala, the smooth-brained one himself. <laughs> Patrick Riley. You know that's going to stick forever now. Sure. And the voice. <laughs> I won't remember it. Nicole Freer. <laughs> Thank exactly. you very much. I, I appreciate all of your time. We're going to catch you guys on the next one. <laughs> If you had wrinkles before this this movie, it's gone, baby. We're all a bunch of smooth brainers now after sitting through the lost world. Goldblum, Jeff Goldblum. Raptors don't train. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Thank God for Sight C. <laughs> Sight B stood for bad idea. <laughs> Just, you have the technology. Why not just switch? Condors, as he mentioned in the first one. Yeah. Condors, dodos, Tasmanian tigers. Let's do it. Woolly mammoths. Anything but this. Yeah. <laughs>